You want somebody out of the house? I want to get somebody out of your house. <laughs> but the fun has just begun. It's showtime. Learn to throw your voice for your friends by the party. Not bad. This is amazing. You want a cigarette? Oh, no, thank you. Oh, well, here I come, baby. He's guaranteed to put some life. Attention, King Workshoppers. In your afterlife. <laughs> Michael Keaton is Beetlejuice. I'm the ghost with the most, babe. <laughs> it's showtime. I believe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I almost always get the first word in for some reason, but this time I'm very glad it was you. As long as it's those words, and only that, those words. So that was an incredibly uh, Beetlejuice heavy um, trailer, considering he's actually not in Beetle. Like he's not in the movie as much as uh, you know. It's okay um, for 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> sir, not appearing in this picture. Yeah. <laughs> And sir, not appearing in this film. Um, no, <laughs> no, exactly. And like, so I don't know. So like kind of putting it, I mean, it's an amazing character, I think. Uh, and, and Michael Keaton absolutely kills it. Like he kills pretty much every character. Yeah. But yeah. like, I, but it's getting still, good. yeah, but there, but this is a movie like littered with amazing characters. I would have called but, it. But would movie. you want more Beetlejuice though? I, I think it's just enough. Cause, cause if you have too much Beetlejuice, it turned into like a um, Ace Ventura or something like that. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I'm not saying that there should have been more Beetlejuice. I just think it's funny that the movie is Beetlejuice and the, like there's only 15 minutes really of Beetlejuice. Yeah, but it's 15 incredibly memorable minutes that are absolutely amazing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm not complaining. Anyway, this is episode <laughs> 59 of Movie Night Extravaganza. I, of course, am Beetle Forest. Um, <laughs> I did not land that one whatsoever. <laughs> I'm joined. <laughs> I'm glad you noticed. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. I just like. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I thought of it as I said it, and I, you know what? Sometimes things land. This, this is really a workshop show. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Appreciate that. Fifty nine. Yeah. You know, we're getting, just getting it off the ground. You get an A for <laughs> effort there. <laughs> All right, I am of course joined by J. Andrew World, illustrator, uh, you know, artist extraordinaire, uh, count graphic <laughs> Beetle Miller, <laughs> but um, uh, uh, you know, graphic designer, everything you could possibly want in a in a in a in an illustrator, right here. How's it going? Pretty good. I am also Mr. Tally Man. Tally me a banana. All right. <laughs> People are saying it more and more. Six yes. foot, Daylight. seven foot, eight foot bunch. Daylight is here. I want to go home. I Please. want to go home. Please, Tally Mr. Tally Man. Ta Tally me bananas. I, I'm, I'm sick of this shit. Anyway. I have so many questions. Yeah. All these nope. bananas over here. Nobody's tallying them. I'm like, nobody I'm wants to being like what do you want from me? Yeah, nobody wants to work. It's a, it's a labor <laughs> shortage out here. So I am stuck tally. Like, you know, I'm stuck picking more bananas than usual. And the tally man, he's taking his fucking sweet time. Um, <laughs> all right. Conan Neutron, you know, host of Protonic Reversal. You know, front man of Conan Neutron and the Secret Friends. You know him. You know his projects. You know what's going on. Um, right. <laughs> we have the best tally man, folks. <laughs> the tally uh, man is going to speak at our rally next. Folks, you won't want to miss it. I myself am strange and unusual. So I'm very happy to be talking about Beetlejuice tonight. <laughs> Uh, can I, can we also give a shout out to uh, Renee Ruin, our very good friend, who is unfortunately cannot appear in the show tonight? So shout out to Renee. Yeah, I really. Yeah, who I, is I our really sir not appearing in this movie? Yes, she actually. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and of course, we're joined by Erica Strout, pretty much the 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 fourth uh, the fourth Beetle at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> Beetle Strout. <laughs> a I see that what's landing. Music video director and musician. She's half the musical duo Dream Tent, plays guitar and sings in Motherfucker, and the live band of Conan Neutron and the Secret Friends. And she was the first person to say Beetlejuice three times. You know, no one knew what would happen. She was brave enough to do it. It wasn't good. 
It wasn't. <laughs> Spoiler alert. I'm Not actually great. old enough to have been the first person. <laughs> I Thanks see, for having me on again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> always, always. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like I don't, you know, I don't know how much to believe of his like uh, whole spiel. I mean, definitely didn't go to Juilliard. I would have. I would have known about that, but, <laughs> but like, I, you know, maybe, maybe he lives through the black plague. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. You know, who knows? You can't really, you can't trust that Beetlejuice and, uh, you know, going, going with that theme. Um, I have a clip of, uh, Michael Keaton talking about the process of deciding to play the role and then kind of being hit with like a, a burst of inspiration. It's a, uh, it's a longer clip, but I, I think it's worth it. Um, yeah. I just want to say that I love that Beetlejuice is an unreliable narrator for events that are actually occurring at that time. Yeah. <laughs> That's a rare skill. Also committed, committed libertarian. He's not really that concerned about the age of consent. He doesn't have any rules. <laughs> well, <laughs> no rules. Ron Paul, Ron Paul, uh, 2008. Beetlejuice. The Ron Paul re relove Ocean. <laughs> sorry. Not sorry. When Tim came to you for Beetlejuice. I didn't understand what he was talking about. Really? I had no idea what he was talking about, but I liked him. <laughs> yes. I went, wow, this guy's something. Uh, and so I said, I, I wish I could do it. You seem like a really nice guy, and I, I know you're creative, but I don't know what you're, you're – I don't get it. And he – and I got a phone call. I said, would you talk to him again? And I liked him, so I thought, yeah, sure. And I, I said, explain more to me what you're trying to do. And when you see it, you understand why it was probably hard for him to explain and I, th I went home and I thought, wow, I, I just don't, I don't know, I like this guy. I'd like to figure out a way. And I thought, no, don't do it. I did. I met him again at a little Mexican restaurant down in Lincoln. And we talked and talked and talked. And I said, he said a couple of things that I just logged back here. And I said, you know what? Give me the night or two days. I don't know through something. And I called uh, the wardrobe department at the studio that was going to make it. Because yes. he said something that made me think of something. And I said, send me a bunch of wardrobe from different time periods. <clears throat> you know, randomly, just pick a rack. And he said something about something else about he exists in all times and all spaces. And, and then I thought of an idea of teeth and I thought of an idea of a walk and I, I knew it had to be energy. And then I said, I don't know. And I called him and said, I got an idea and I don't know if it's going to work or not. Uh, so let's just go do this thing. And here's the amazing part about it. He never saw any of it. We t discussed it. And I said, I want, I want hair that looks like I stuck my phone in, a, in a, an electrical outlet. And in the great V. Neal, the wardrobe, I said, I want mold, because Tim said he lives like in under rocks and stuff. I said, I want mold somewhere. And she created this amazing, and then, so then I said, okay, and I showed up for work, and I walked on the stage, and I said, this is either gonna be way off the mark, or he's just gonna, I don't know what he's gonna do. He got it immediately, and, and he, you know, it's not like it was, way outside what he was talking about but it was and he he said yes that and let's do more of that and let's do more of that. then it just became this unbelievably free so i started walking around my house by myself oh boy that should that should have been <laughs> thinking about walk and talk and uh my brother robert's here tonight he said he did that all the time growing up this is nothing at all unusual so uh I started thinking about something and I called him up and said, all right, all right, I'll do it. I don't know. I got an idea. This is the truth. He never saw it. Uh, I, I had an idea of hair. He said, it just should stand on end. I said, it should just be like, he stuck his finger in a socket. It should like, <laughs> like that. So V. Neal, the great Academy Award, I think, the uh, makeup artist, supposed to be the makeup artist, and I was talking to her about these ideas, and she wanted to do that eye, big eye thing, and I said, that's a good idea, let's get pale, and I said, yeah, I want mold, and I said, give me hair, like, you know, and um, and Tim had that striped suit idea, I don't know why, I don't know what that was about, and then I started putting more work together, blah, 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 and um, when he never saw it, uh, no one had seen it, I didn't really, I was, said, here we go, you know, I didn't have any chance to leave or anything, and they had begun shooting it already. And we're on stage, and they had already shot a bunch of stuff, and I went in, I said, the set. And, and I, I was in makeup for a long time, and um, um, uh, still nothing, people go, well, there's a movie, it's Beatles, and, and Alec Baldwin, and everybody, everybody forgets about how great that cast was, by the way. And, and you, and, and, 
they started shooting some of that stuff and they had the sets built and Tim's in there working and uh, and I walk in full blue of juice. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, some of the crew guys, and I had no idea why, they didn't know what I was gonna do. Just you just start hearing and they start going, juice, juice, juice. <laughs> <laughs> I look for OJ. <laughs> okay. So, um, Captain Loud Laugher there filming, but yeah, yeah, good stuff. His whole uh, introduction it was really interesting because he had like his family there and stuff. And, um, I don't know, he just seemed like he was really like vibing with that crowd. Everybody was laughing at all of his his comments and stuff, and he just started getting more and more free throughout the whole thing. I have another like three minutes of a clip for later on, but um, I I find it I find it fascinating, kind of what directors have on their minds, like how much of the you know, because Tim Burton didn't write Beetlejuice necessarily. I think I think it was a script no, that didn't. got yeah that got handed to him, mm -hmm. and it's interesting when when you kind of picture a character and like how much of it is is you thinking about that as a director and how much of it is the actor um, kind of planning out their own character. And for Beetlejuice, obviously it seemed really important that Michael Keaton like could actually visualize what this was, which makes sense watching any Tim Burton like interview from like the eighties or nineties where he's just like this weird guy that like goes out of his way to be like strange and unusual pretty much. I mean, like, you know, like he's always trying to be like the weirdest artist guy you can possibly be. But like when someone doesn't get what you're trying to explain, that doesn't help the situation whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, but I also yeah I see how it was hard to explain too. <laughs> but yeah, it's it, it, this is the kind of movie that if you sat down and described it to someone, they'd be like, "That sounds terrible," and I yeah. do not want to see that. Like that yeah. sounds like it's not going to work. It sounds like it's going to be annoying and obnoxious, and it's somehow charming, even though I mean I was going to say Beetlejuice is little little rapey you know like the slightest slightest bit rapey you know just, just him just and it's the fireies which you know he's yeah they both have like yeah exactly <laughs> those weird ideas of consent as you alluded to earlier yes yeah yeah but i but think anyway, that's Erica, kind of the magic too oh, thank you conan i think the magic of it too was like that they didn't have something so set in stone and like everybody kind of brought their own you know energy to it well, clearly Michael Keaton in a big way, but like, I think that's kind of what made it what it is. Yeah. It was kind of neat. It's like rolling with the punches as you create something. Um, And, and I think it's, I, I think it's interesting um, that this is kind of the tail end of the eighties, right? Like people are, are tired of this, you know, the Reagan years, people are tired of, you know, the social safety net being uh, eroded away. People are tired of, you know, all these things kind of changing really fast. It's like this neoliberal turn. And I, I doubt that mm -hmm. Tim Burton never, you know, thought about it. Um, in, I don't in, imagine in Tim those... Burton thinking much about these things. But but the plot of the movie, right, is kind of um, not fetishizing, but kind of, I guess, um, making the the homeowner, right? Like the middle class homeowner, like um, like Barbara and, uh, and, and, and Adam are. Um, kind of like the hero of this movie they don't want their house to change and then you know the evil uh you know like maybe not yeah, even please. evil but like yeah like it kind of is like the, the dad sells fucking condos and it's yeah, like it's, a real it's implied dog. it's yeah. implied it's they're douchey if not evil yeah and and you know the dad is plotting to buy the entire town all of a sudden and mm -hmm. like uh you know as one does <laughs> and then and then sell it off either as an amusement park or as condos or you know what i mean like that's his big plan once he's there although his original thing was just i want some peace and quiet and then but he can't stop thinking about those deals he's a very uh it's a very yeah. trumpian trumpian junior executive kind of guy mm -hmm. who seems to have who seems to have had a nervous breakdown and uh, completely burned out from you know <laughs> but he never walks away from equity so what can you say well this, this is what this is what 88 right so this is still mm -hmm you know uh, it's not quite the morning in america era but like think of other movies that are coming around this time like they live right you know where you have like these critiques of capital but that's kind of wild outlier like the best way to show that kind of thing it just as we talked about in time band it's just through satire mm -hmm. they had like clearly this is like you know this character is like that character is incredibly annoying i don't like that character oh that's what what are all the things this character stands for oh well, all these other things so if you wanted to get those out best to do it in a joke by the way still probably usually the, the more effective way to get people over there aren't already willing to uh believe 
uh, the ethos, right? Is to, it's like you give the pill to the dog, you want to put in a little bit of cheese. It's like that's the yeah. comedy. And that's, you know, Beetlejuice is actually a pretty stunning critique of like that suburban uh, gentrification mindset. Mm-hmm. But you get, you know, like a cartoon demon buddy friend all those things like running around you know being a being a wild card wild card yeah he like charlie a he's, a, wild card. he's a failed he's a, civil servant yeah exactly which is kind of wild to think about right? he's, well he's what happens when you try to bring creativity to the bureaucracy like which is like a kind of interesting thing to realize like when you kind of try to bring this yeah. aggressive um style of like creativity to a bureaucratic institution which is not you know by its very nature, creative. Um, he's kind of, you know, gone so far outside of it that now he's like a, a bio exterminist or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, he's, <laughs> it's like a crazy, it's a crazy thing. Like, cause you like, you can't like this imagine niche him. job that, yeah, like, like, <laughs> yeah. just because of like this bureau, this massive bureaucracy is this incredibly niche job. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, the scariest part of this movie also is that, you know, once you die, you're still in this like, Number one, means tested because, like, you know, you only get those three vouchers to go into the, um, you know, or you have to go outside of the system. Like, means yeah. tested neoliberalized bureaucracy that, like, you know, it's kind of terrifying that, like, after you die, that's where you go. And it's like <laughs> you're back to, like, having a caseworker and, like, you only get this amount of time with your caseworker. Like, you can imagine that, like, a rich person that dies probably doesn't have to go through those hoops. Like, they probably have a much, uh, I feel like maybe they have a much, um, easier time of it like I, I feel like that's almost implied like it's almost like you know this middle class yeah. family this middle class couple that like dies in, in a car wreck like they don't have time for it. like they get pushed aside by this very um incredibly like neoliberalized system which i don't i doubt tim burton was thinking about any of these things but like no. after after having after <laughs> having as many conversations about this era and about that style of um of uh you know of uh, filmmaking wait a second i i i'm getting a i'm getting a i'm getting a reading here um <laughs> all right i i have to say uh christina christina christina, <laughs> christina. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh god i was gonna wear my beetlejuice pants but uh, i got this wig on instead there you go. There you go. I was gonna say, you, you, you did. You done your hair did. So there you go. That works out. Also, by the way, it never explains in the movie. What happens if you rent? Oh, you're out. Haunt? <laughs> Nowhere <laughs> or everywhere Are, is like every like 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 a, a studio apartment have like, you know, 90 ghosts in it all like, you know, oh, you know, but also like yeah. what if you're homeless? Like, yeah, do you I, I feel like you if you're don't homeless. exist then. Yeah, we have yeah. questions. Tim Burton. <laughs> You're brought into like the room of lost souls. They're like, I, we're, we're bringing you in here early. You didn't even need to get the, the fucking seance. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, think of all the people who've haunted before you came. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, another, I guess another, another thing about this is like, this is, this is a show that asks the tough questions about Beetlejuice. <laughs> Thank you. But like <laughs> another really dark part of it is that, you know, and they make this into a joke where Otho says, you know, if you, if you commit suicide, you become a civil servant in the afterlife. Like, and then you see the actual lady that's sitting at the receptionist desk with her wrist, her wrist slit. And mm-hmm. was like, if I knew then what I knew now, what I know now, like I wouldn't have had my little accident and everyone's kind of laughing. And the, I think that's kind of fucking terrifying. Like, yeah. you know, that, that, you know, accidental death, you kind of become a ghost and then suicide, you kind of are stuck in this endless, mindless, like bureaucracy for the rest of your fucking existence. You're punished. <laughs> yeah. By, exactly. And by they say it's the that. easy way out. So maybe that's why. And I'm like, bullshit. Yeah, by, by basically being a receptionist of the DMV. <laughs> Forever Which... and ever and ever. <laughs> Pretty also, they're, they're, in the house. <laughs> they're, they're in the house for 125 years. And then they don't really explain what happens after that. Like yeah. you, it seems like you're kind of sentenced to haunt your house for a certain amount of time. And then from then that they moment... throw you to the uh, set of Dune, apparently. Yeah, and uh, and also too, like time goes by faster. It seems in the afterlife, they're like, "How long we've we been gone?" And it's like three months or something like that. Yeah, and they're like, "When we he wait that long?" Right, and when he first the when Adam first goes out into the sand pit with this whatever the sand shark or whatever it's called, sand dune. Snake. Uh, yeah, into dune, dune and yeah. He goes out into the set of dune, as I mentioned earlier. He's in yes. dune. He's out there for like what seems like a couple minutes, and then he comes back in, and she's like, "You were gone for three hours." 
Yep. Yeah. So it's it's heavily implied that there's yeah there they're, there's some time dilation happening. Oh, yeah. there we go. Oh, there we go. Back. Got got, got it up up the Dow quotient on this episode. I will say, I <laughs> well, was she was surprised. she was running head first into the door over and over again. So I, <laughs> I felt know, like maybe not. it's like she was saying, "Dad, Dad, yeah. Dad." <laughs> that, that sounds like an average week for Kona Neutron. That's like <laughs> you know, running my head to a door. <laughs> I've been telling you, that's crazy. <laughs> but um yeah i mean I, I don't know i time definitely moves differently also the the direction like giving michael keaton the direction um like oh he he lives in all time and all spaces at the same time it's just like and is a perv in all of them <laughs> yeah well maybe in some yeah. of them you know consent law the rules are a little different you know you never know it's all <laughs> maybe there's like the libertarian world <laughs> 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 it has no sexual harassment laws. Yes, thank God. <laughs> but uh, this is this is this is the second Michael Keaton clip while I handle Audrey and seeing what she wants and <laughs> getting those needs met. She just yeah. wants to be on camera. I don't, don't think she. All, really? I don't. I don't think she does. She's like hyperventilating a little bit. Oh. Uh, she's got stage fright. Oh. Yeah. She, she's separation anxiety. So I'll send you my journal was coming up and I was kind of, because I said, I'm going to start here. You know, sometimes you go, well, my character's going to be here, and I'm going to bring up here, then we're going to park. And I said, no, my character's going to start here. <laughs> and then for the next couple months, I'm going to try to go there. <laughs> and I was exhausted every day. So there was the script, and there were some things that we kept, but mostly I just riffed. And Tim, Eyes lit up and he loved it. So, okay, now do this and do that and do this like this. And we're going to send it to my kitten tree or work. It's your responsibility, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, I walk in and everyone's going, shh, shh, shh. And, and uh, Tim kind of, <laughs> weirdly, Tim didn't really react like, oh my God. He just kind of went, ah, all right. <laughs> So we, we hit it, and as soon as we started doing it, it was like, oh, yeah, that's what we thought this would be. It's like no one ever questioned or said, what the hell, you know? <laughs> because no one really knew there was no specific thing, you know? Um, he had these little sketches that looked nothing like what I, we, and him kind of came up with. It looked nothing like that. So we start, and then Tim, <laughs> instead of going, oh, no, 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 this is totally wrong, or, or I don't know what you're doing, God bless him. He goes, oh, okay, okay. And, you know, and, and, and so you do that, wait, stop, I got an idea. And it started going, and then, so it was like an improvisation. There's a thing called yes and, you know, so you, you're in an improv class or in a scene, and if somebody says, uh, uh, here you've just been elected president, you, you never go, no, I'm not. You go, yes, and as a matter of fact, to keep the scene going. So every time I, uh, you know, I do something, they go, yeah, and then, you know, do that, and then I wrote, I had this idea to write that little, there used to be, remember Cal Worthington? There used to be a guy in California named Cal Worthington. So and his dog Spot. I have references on this show. And he'd be on TV and bad shows until about 3 o'clock in the morning. And he used to do a thing where he put a cowboy hat on. And he used to say, I'll eat a bug. If you buy a car from me, you just be the greatest. A friend that I lived with from a great school that loved cow running. So he was, oh, there's no cow. So, so I thought, I should do the thing. And there's that cow. And I gave him a cow. And I said, give me a cowboy hat. And I said, I'm just going to make up a song I'm like a cow. Like this is like a song. <laughs> So it was like that, and every time someone would come up, some Tim would go, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, then then wait a minute. Gotta, and he tried to explain to me what he was making. I'm not lying. And I go, wait, let me understand this. And he goes, okay, it's hard to explain. Your head's going to spin in this. <laughs> and it was kind of like that for, like, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not actually not in this movie that long. That's a really weird thing. But, uh, it was like for a month, for five weeks, or six weeks, and it was about as much fun. And, and I thought, this is so wrong. This is, I thought, I can afford one failure. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm all right. It's early. I'll, I'll correct this in the next movie. 
It's Kyle Beetlejuice and his dog Spot. <laughs> <laughs> his those next commercials were legendary in California, by the way. Like I grew up on those. That's no, and he does that really well. That whole voice and that whole like mm-hmm. I haven't seen those commercials, but like oh, they, they were up. like it was the commercial you look for, and he would do these stunts, like he would like ride on a, a biplane and stuff. And, Wait, like, what's the guy's name? Cal. Uh, Cal Worthington. We try to. Was, uh, I'll, I'll try to. I'll try to pull up the. Oh, there's a couple of super cuts that are uh, uh, that are out there, but yeah, I mean he's lost. I seem to recall a conversation about him on bad takes. Um, was that was that my birthday stream, Forrest? You were there. Did we talk about him on on your birthday stream? That's when we did uh, tape ads. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, Fascinating. So more classic Cal Worthington <laughs> epic TV commercial. Yeah, there's a, there's a there's a bunch of them. I'm trying to find the. They're they're great. I mean, like that that was like, I, you know, far be it from me to uh, praise commercials because I fucking despise them. But uh, you know, they were pretty entertaining in an era that like now since Gen X is like in charge of all the advertising, everything is like surrealist, like crazy. Oh, that's you know that's very clever. But there just wasn't there weren't commercials like this at the time. And this dude was like, he just really wanted to sell you a car and would do all these crazy crazy things to to. Uh, <laughs> convince you to do so or at least remember his name and i'll tell you what man it worked everyone knew cow word that he was everybody everyone's like oh yeah that's that crazy that crazy dude that i was doing the stunts and i saw he made over 300 million dollars from his dealerships yeah, yeah he, he's like he was like legendary <laughs> like every, every everybody wanted to like that had a car dealership thought they were like you know the pick and save cow worthington you know they uh i feel like i feel like they referenced that kind of style too on uh oops. Um, hold on. I feel like they, they kind of reverenced it on a uh, better call Saul with Saul Goodman. Oh, a hundred percent. Like, and like, as you know, the, the whole character is like, like, yeah, that's like a Cal Worthington type character mixed with the uh, injury, personal injury lawyer. Have you been injured in an accident? You know, like that's mm-hmm. perfect. Anyway. <laughs> How you doing, Christina? Thanks for jumping I'm doing, on. I'm doing good. No problem. Doing better now that you're on this show, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, w- I just took my trazodone, so let's see how oh, it goes. Okay, well, I was gonna say <laughs> this show may have nothing to do with it then. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of Beetlejuice or a lot of Cal Worthington in, in Beetlejuice. I feel. Cal Worthington and his dog Spot. If you need a little truck, go see Cal. Get a camper, change your luck, buy a van and save a buck. For any kind of truck, go see Cal. This is a big old giant friendly supermarket of cars. Just acres and acres and acres of cars and trucks to show you. I'd like to invite you out. Hey, friends, if you're out buying a car, you ought to drop by with them for See me first. Just see me first, give me first chance to deal, and I'll give you two free dinners at Victoria Station. <laughs> all the barbecued ribs and all the barbecued chicken you can eat at Victoria Station. And no purchase is necessary. You don't have to buy a car from me. All I want you to do is see me first, give me first chance to deal. But you talk about a giant selection of cars, just acres and acres and acres and acres and acres and row after row after row after row of cars and trucks on sale out here. And you can take your good old easy time because we're open every day to midnight every night. Now, I've got some more cars here I'm going to wholesale. I'm going to wholesale them to you. Oh, yeah. I'll wholesale yeah. them to you. I'll sell you one of them. I'll sell you all of them. First come, first serve. You talk about some low prices. Look at this. A 74 Buick Le Sabre Luxus on sale for 1200 bucks. A 73 Chevy Monte Carlo, $1,300. A 1973 Pontiac, a Granville four-door, on sale for $1,000. Pick a car, drive it 10 days. Here's a 73 Chevy Vega GT Wagon. It's on sale for $800. Drive it 10 days and try it. Here's a 76 Chevy Chevette on sale, $1,300. Oh, I'd drive the shit Here's out of that, too. Here's a Chevy Camaro <laughs> on sale, $1,600. Drive it 10 days and try it. Shit brown Camaro. Here's a 66 a Delta Camaro. 88 two-door, yes. $600 the full price. $600? Here's a 71 <laughs> Pontiac Firebird, the full price, $900. you got to turn this off. It's blowing Here's my brain. Here's a 72 Datsun, a 240Z. The full price, nineteen hundred dollars. Here's a seventy-five Mercury Cougar, the XR7. He's, he's probably just gonna sell cars for the rest of that. I mean, like, but the, you get an idea commercial. for like, yeah, it's so unlimited swagger hooks him in, and then he just like rattles off like how cheap the cars are and how he'll like, like I'll eat a baby to sell you a car, you know, not <laughs> that much. But like yeah. the Beetlejuice is like the extension of that. Like, yeah, you also got like like local knockoffs across the country too. Vibes, mm-hmm. yeah, stand. <laughs> 
Be- Beetlejuice is like you gave that guy a little bit of cocaine, and then you were like, "All right, head, head out there." Right, like, right, exactly. You want. I'll, 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 I love, I love when he's like, he's like, "I'll eat anything, swallow anything, I'll do anything for your business." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, because that's that's the thing. Is, is he started off and like he got kind of a reputation, Cal Winston, for like for you know having these like audacious commercials, and it started being. Then he started introducing the animals, and then like the dog spot started off as an actual dog. Then it was like a tiger. Then it was like an elephant, and like like it just. <laughs> It was just like escalating over, and people were like, "What's he gonna do next?" And then, like, then he started doing stunts. He started doing stunts, people. So yeah, like Beetlejuice is like, the and, and these these actually made show. national television because like the one yeah. of the networks like picked him up and would like broadcast it, and, and so like the entire country were watching these commercials on like network television. <laughs> right, he got um, his, like, they made commercials that were so clever that like they got airplay like in like areas that nobody could possibly drive to Roseville to get Cowboy they did to go get. But they ended up expanding the business. <laughs> yeah, and then 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 what it, that also led to is like uh, copycats across the country. So so like um, I grew yeah, up but in none the of them were as good. I don't think people commercial. and people still yeah, do no, no, they, never they good, try to be but, like Cal Worthington. <laughs> Um, you know, you know, the one I remember was we're going to get a crane. We're going to race car up higher than the big chicken. Cause, cause there's this KFC. That's this giant chicken building. Um, it's like a 50 foot tall chicken. That's all you there need. Was know. A, uh, there was a, there was a <laughs> thing that John Oliver exposed where, um, I guess across the country, there was this, uh, this place you could like, you know, if you were a car dealership, you could go to this place and they would give you the same like stock commercial, but it was like kind of this crazy commercial. Like and, plug, plug and play. Yeah. Yeah. You can yeah. plug in your dealership and whatever. Yeah. None of that and, existed. But he, exposed, he exposed how many of them across the United States were using this. And then he made an offer that anybody that um, anyone that applied, like if they, if they promised that they would use his commercial, like John Oliver's commercial, he had his staff write a commercial. And uh, he was like, as long as you use this ad and air it, like I will, I will write you a free commercial that is different than any other commercial. And it was about like it was this couple fighting and have like fighting um and like getting ready to have a divorce because the guy bought a, a giant minivan that didn't fit in the garage without telling his wife. So they wrote this entire like four four minute drama that ended up getting like bought by one of the <laughs> the car dealerships. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, you know, also the point getting, is to get the attention, right? Strong, <laughs> so, yeah. strong uh, flashbacks to uh, the bad takes episode where you told the same story. Yeah, well, I, th- I think I had just seen it on the bad takes episode <laughs> when we were talking about that well that was that show this is this show all right you know yeah i'm just saying we, we need to be presenting fresh content for people out there cal <laughs> yeah, worthington well, i'm explaining a john oliver out. video i'm explaining <laughs> a john oliver video i saw so it's not even like that's fresh content i'm just like so one time i saw this thing <laughs> yeah i saw this thing once let me tell you all about it great this is but why we tune in, folks. The show is literally I watch we watch movies that everyone's already seen, and then we're like, "What? This is what happened in the movie." So it's not like outside of the realm of possibility that I'm like, I watched a YouTube video once. Hey, <laughs> you know what? Um, what from like watching Beetlejuice is like, um, Catherine's, you know, the the stepmom, whatever. She, how much her character is like her character from? Oh uh, God, what's the Ships Creek? Yes. You know what's you know what's crazy? I've never seen that. You know what's crazy about that? All right, so there's a town 20 minutes from me called uh called Beacon. And Beacon is literally what would happen if you gave Catherine O'Hara in Beetlejuice the ability <laughs> to take over a town. It's literally like they gentrified artsy, like bad, bad artsy. Yeah, no, they gentrified the fuck oh. out of a town by saying this is this town, it's the next town on the exit this way, uh, like going south towards the city. And they said this is gonna be the next like Brooklyn art hub. Oh, and they gentrified yes. it. The median house price there now, I looked this up last night when I was thinking about it, is uh, $475,000 is the median price to buy a house there now. It's so and, reasonable. <laughs> but just What's across the, the bridge. Like, though? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> but just across the bridge is Newburgh, which is like not a good city, a lot of it. I mean, some of it's been somewhat gentrified, but it's like, a you know, a lot of it is low-income housing. So you go right across the bridge to the next town across the thing. And it's four hundred seventy-five thousand dollars to buy a, a regular house. Now, the next exit up, Kingston, um, the entire town kind of just got bought out by Warren Buffett's son. Um, and and so that's like Shit's Creek. Catherine O'Hara bought it, yeah. like, bought a town. And then the next exit is like Beetlejuice. Catherine O'Hara got to buy a town. And I was yeah. thinking about that last night. <laughs> is that a, a, a Chet Buffett? 
that bought that town? Is that right? Um, yeah, yeah I like think Chet, so. Chet Hanks. Yeah. That's oh, boy. The, but, but was like, that too deadpan? I'm sorry. I thought that was, I thought everyone thinks. <laughs> I thought that no, was clever. Cool. Right? I, I was on mute. It's, it's definitely not the, it's definitely not the, what, Glenn Hanks son. I think it's the other son. That... <laughs> Colin Hanks. Colin, Colin Hanks. Hanks. Yeah. He, he, Colin he made Hanks that tower is, movie. Good that tower records. Yeah, he made uh, that Tower Records documentary, and that's pretty good. And he's, uh, he he was in Fargo, the TV show, and that was yeah, good. he was so good in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think serious. he's he's like one of those good actors, but not like he doesn't have that so, thing that his dad has. Yeah, and, and yeah. so like I love him, but he's not his dad. Oh man, does Michael Keane have kids? Because imagine if his kids try to get into the business, they can't. Because Michael mm. Keane is good in everything he does. He does. He yes. does have kids. He shouted out his kid <laughs> in that speech that he was giving. But but the kids seem to be very young. He's like, "Don't worry, it's just a movie. Daddy's just a movie." So I feel like maybe the kids. I'm not, not really this pervert in real life. <laughs> <laughs> At least not in public. <laughs> yeah. The the other thing the other thing I wanted to point out with those. Uh, Back to Beetlejuice <laughs> with... Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I got lost in the geography lesson. Sorry, please. Yeah. I just... It's it's interesting. I don't, I don't know because I, I got... I have... I resonate with Beetlejuice because I have parents that came up from the city. I mean, I was telling you this last night. Like, I have parents that came up from the city. My dad was in architecture. I mean, he was working for corporate architecture firms in the city. And then he switched to, like, doing sustainable architecture. And my mom is an artist. So, like, I resonated with this movie since I was a kid because the, the same kind of environments that are in this, of course, it's it's Connecticut and, and Beetlejuice. But, like, that same kind of, like, that mentality, right? Like, every town that these like, these artists come to is going to be, like, the next, uh, the next city, like, the summer city art town. Yeah. And right. they just continually gentrify towns going up the Hudson River uh, to try to create <laughs> that environment for themselves. So As this a man movie's... of a golf girl, yeah. I relate to Lydia. <laughs> Seriously, I was like growing up, I'm like, my whole life is uh, gro- one big dark. Gro- growing world. up, I would have very much liked to relate with Lydia, yes. I <laughs> I mean, also These too, cameras aren't on, right? Yeah. Also, too, the fact that the Winona Ryder like, has aged so gracefully and has managed to bounce back. It took, like, what, 20 years for her to bounce back since that shoplift incident, which I'm like, you know what? You did That's your right. thing, girl. You did what you had to do. Nothing wrong with that. Anyway. I mean, she didn't no rape anybody. I know. That's like, true. it really... It, 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 Unlike it her took, movie dad. It took it was, her, like, well, no, oh, he, he had, What? Jeff, Jeffrey Jones had child porn on his laptop or something? Yeah. And he's been able to yeah. bounce back. Yeah. He bounced... He, <laughs> he managed to bounce back faster than one owner rider did, and that pissed me the fuck off. I'm like... It, yeah. it, like... I can't believe that it took her until Stranger Things to become like relevant again. And I'm just like, you know, she's had this amazing career and we forget that she's done movies even before Beetlejuice. And like when we think of her mm-hmm. roles, we think of Beetlejuice, and of course, Ever Scissors Hand and uh, even The Crucible, because I, I, I remember watching that in, um, in high school. school. Yeah. And yeah, Reality Bites. Like the just the range that Heathers. she has. Heather's, oh, yeah. I was, was going to say, up, let's baby. speak of Heather's. Lick yeah. it up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys look through how many different people were considered for not only Lydia, the role of Lydia, but um, the role of Beetlejuice? I bet Molly no. Greenwald was probably up for it Lydia. Like a lot. Point. I'm sorry. And this <laughs> is a bit that, that like we did it for They Live, and I think it should be a continuing bit, but I put absolutely 0.0% effort into actually doing it. So and do legend. you remember any of them? Well, the one that I think is the funniest, and we talked about this on They Live too, is Arnold. Was was well, yeah, yeah. That changes that movie entirely. Arnold, yeah, yeah. So Lydia played play by Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> well, that would have changed the movie as well. But <laughs> well, life is one dark room. Um, I'm gonna see Goth it's Arnold. It's so time. <laughs> okay, and also Dustin Looking Hoffman. Ooh, Dustin. Okay. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. Mm. The, the one the one that I saw uh, that they kept referencing is that originally he wanted Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah. Oh, that, that was a very showman. Movie. Yeah, that would have been a very different one. Yeah. yeah, I think if Robin Williams had done it, I think Ooh. that could have been cool. I could see Robin yeah. Williams doing it because he always had I, that energy, you know, that like yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. here's 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 the list. Um, okay. Thank you for us. <laughs> All right. I love doing this part. Like, it's interesting to figure out, like, oh, what would this movie been like had so and so been in it instead of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I like this. this is a Nelson Mandela. Look. Oh my God, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Sydney Poitier. Yeah, yeah. Who? He's got such range. <laughs> this is He's a weird a great list. actor. I want to tell you this is a weird list, and some of these might have actually worked. Oh, yeah. Dustin Hoffman would yeah. not have worked. Dustin yeah. Hoffman would not have yeah. been. Yeah. It would have been Dustin very Hoffman, different. maybe. I mean, he did Tootsie. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. 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 Maybe he would have been my favorite, but. Robin I don't know if it would have been terrible. Robin, yeah. Robin, uh, Robin yeah. Williams, that that would have that would have been. I stand by good. Robin Williams. He would have been yeah. that pervy. I don't think. Yeah, I was gonna say it would have dialed down the perv, but like up the manic energy, which is saying a lot. Yeah, it, you know, but also how much of it was scripted ahead of time? Because it seems like I mean that entire uh, that entire scene where he's doing the the bio exorcist like TV ad. It seems like uh, Michael Keaton kind of ad libbed that entire thing, right? Like it, it doesn't Probably seem like did. that yeah. necessarily. But Robin like, Williams I also don't great think at that, that, that too. Robin Williams has the foresight of coming up with, "Hey, get me a cow. I need to ad lib something." Every um, every line of his from Aladdin was ad lib, which is why they couldn't get like a best like screenplay uh, Academy Award, I think, because a lot of the his stuff he came up with himself; it wasn't scripted. I would have just written which this down. Disney hated his guts in the end. I, I'm exactly the same yeah. way, so I totally get it. Yeah, <laughs> Christopher Lloyd. Ooh. I don't, I, you know. Yeah, okay. energy. yeah, I could see yeah. how he could have done it. Yeah, he was a good Again, uh, not, uncle not too pervy though. Yeah, and Doc Brown. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Doc Brown was a little nuts. You know, he had the hair. Yeah, he's also yeah. hanging and out that, with that teenager. <laughs> he's, he's hanging out with teenagers. teenagers. He's hanging he out with teenagers, and though. they never they never explain that in Back to the Future. They never explain like <laughs> how there's so much friends. of a lack of interest in explaining that. I love I love it. They're just like, believe me, you don't care. It's not that. Maybe he spoke at the school at one point, and then he's like. I'm looking for a friend. I'm really here because I'm looking for a, a yeah. lab partner assistant slash friend. That... <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Jim Carrey, who, who would have probably stolen oh. the, he would have probably stolen the, 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 you know. That that era yeah. of Jim Carrey would have Late been 80s, good early in the 90s. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I used well, to yeah. watch A Living Color. It, it kind of. Yeah. He yeah, was he, good. He, the he, fact he, that he, he was, was an good. SNL reject just. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well done. Snell Lord. dropping the ball for the last like what thirty. And I years? think he auditioned oh, for the same season, like when like uh, Eddie Murphy was on. So it's like, oh, you mm. picked all these great people, but there's also some awesome people that you guys for like didn't want. Okay. You know, also maybe maybe he wasn't quite ready though. Yeah. Like, like uh, well, that that would have been eighty four. Um, because we really didn't start seeing Jim Carrey until like eighty six, and, yeah. and like uh, you know, so so like. So Jim Carrey, uh, what was that vampire movie he did? Like, like oh. that's not the Jim Carrey we love. Um, yeah. it, it, it's it's getting there, and like you can see him in a living color, like becoming that Jim Carrey that 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 we know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, in nineteen, maybe I don't know. I, I can't. You know, I, I don't know. It would have been before eighty four too. It would have been like what eighty three, eighty two. Right, going going down the list though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tim Curry, I think could have probably pulled it off. Right. Mm. I, you know. Oh yeah, uh, uh -huh. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that would have been very different, though. It would have been like Legend. <laughs> he would have been sexy Beetlejuice then. <laughs> Beetlejuice, yeah, Beetlejuice. No, no one would have cared. Uh, wouldn't, no how, one would have cared that much you. about being harassed by him. He'd be like, "It's showtime." <laughs> I'm really. Lydia, I think I'm Lydia, mostly. Lydia cured. goes. Lydia goes. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, and stop short. Oh, Lydia. How could you? <laughs> I think with Tim Curry, I think I'm most curious to see what he would have chosen as far as the look. Like since they, since Michael Keaton got to like be a part of that process, I would wonder yes. what so, Tim oh, Curry after, would have come up with as far as the look goes. Especially the after same. Legend, he wanted makeup to be toned down, so I think he would have been cool with the Beetlejuice look overall. Mm -hmm. He would, yeah, but he probably would have gone like a little less like like the mossy aspects, of yeah, it, like, right. Yeah. yeah. Also, it's kind of crazy that um, this is Tim Burton's second movie. I think like he he hadn't done very much, so it's crazy that these Pee -wee are the actors, big adventure people. What a like, hit! These are the these are the actor caliber that he's trying to get for this. It's kind of funny to think about that. Yeah, it's it's like, uh, the stars here. Timmy, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, too green still. All right, this one, this one, this one's kind of a toss up. Jack Nicholson as oh. Beetlejuice. Ooh, oh. eighty very different. Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Ooh. Definitely toning up the curviness a little I, bit. 
I feel like he would have been <laughs> even more evil somehow. He would have yeah, been, like, been like too evil. Dark energy. Been really subtly evil. Yeah. It would have <laughs> been more like the witches of Beetlejuice. Yeah, yeah. It would have it would have changed the character intrinsically mm-hmm. in a way that I think it would have been like a rated R movie then. Yeah. Like it, I don't know. Like would it would it have worked comedically with Jack Nicholson? Yeah. Would he have put I in the yes. effort? I, I mean, have, I mean, yeah. he did a really good job um, in um, uh, that movie with uh, Adam Sandler, Anger Management. He did a really oh, yeah. good job, kind yeah, of being like, weird. like I-, I blocked that from my memory. <laughs> oh, yes, wait, yeah. it's a good movie. I'm <laughs> just saying about, his performance oh, in it is. I think his performance. The in Witches is of funny. Eastwick. Witches yeah. of Eastwick is good. Which I fuck with Witches of Eastwick because, yeah, like, yeah. like yeah. in the '80s, actually, I mean, through all of his career, he kind of like cycles from like trying and not trying. So, like, you know. Yeah. Batman somehow he got to he tried um and, and succeeded I think but, that would but, have been interesting too Michael Keaton uh and Jack Nicholson in the Michael Keaton role that would have been that would have been fascinating for that era because they were both oh. A-list stars right so yeah all right yeah. Bill Murray oh. I don't, it wouldn't work <laughs> too, too low energy <laughs> what as Beetlejuice huh um huh Couple ways I, that could go. I don't know. Would, yeah, it would have been interesting, but I don't think I. I think I'm happy that like Michael Keaton got like, it. You know, it's showtime, and you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, like it's showtime. Showtime. You know, he likes to do the like, yeah. sing songy stuff every, sometimes. <laughs> every day he wakes up. Every day Bill Murray uh, Beetle just wakes up, and it's the same day again. And he's like, "Ah, fuck! I'm stuck <laughs> in this. I'm stuck in this stupid uh, like model town. <laughs> model town. Yeah. And it's you it's really, exist really everywhere really at all times, and it's still like, the same day." Bill Murray does not live that far from me. Like he lives like a few because he lives in South Carolina. Like he lives on the coast, mm-hmm. and I'm like, "Call him up, in Charleston. There, yeah, get him on the show. Times. Call him up. I hear he answers his phone." Yeah, there are times <laughs> when uh people go to the Isle, like the Isle Palms and they party with Bill Murray, and I'm like, God damn it, why can't we be there when he's there? Can I party with <laughs> Bill Murray? God out. damn it! My sister opened uh, for Bill Murray's brother, so so like uh you know it's not out of the realm of possibility of getting Bill Murray. So what we can do? Roll the dice. That, oh, that, that'd be uh, really fun. I would love. I would. I would have Brian Murray on the show. Brian Doyle Murray. Yeah, him Come too. Come on the show, Brian Murray. He's he's, he's good. <laughs> yeah. Both I, of them. He's he's fucking amazing in Caddyshack. But but we'd have to we'd, we'd have to be amazing show. in Caddyshack. Yeah, we'd have Not to apply the coffee and cigarettes movie. philosophy though, and refer to him only by first and last name every single time. Bill Murray. He's in Best in Show, right? <laughs> Brian. No, Murray? I'm, I think I'm waiting. Thinking of waiting for Guffman. Waiting for Guffman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's Scrooge a, there's a famous came out this famous 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 story is, about um, after mm-hmm. after coffee and cigarettes. Um, Bill Murray showing up to a, a bar in New York City with the RZA and the Jizza, like li- like literally showing up with Wu Tang Clan, going behind the bar, not telling anyone he was going there, pushing the bartenders out behind the bar at a place, and then no matter what people ordered, they only gave them tequila. No matter, like people would order something, <laughs> and, and yeah. <laughs> um, now, right, there, so, and I was like, now were they casting choices for Lydia? Because I know with the eighties, you know, teen movies. <laughs> the oh, was there. The or Ryan or Ryan. <laughs> there was like probably Molly you, Ringwald. You and, want that? And, oh, oh, I thought you meant. I thought you meant where the Wu Tang Clan <laughs> <laughs> with the Jizza o- o- as Lydia Dietz. ODB as Beetlejuice. That would have been fun. Yeah, I meant um, it. No, you want so, the Beetlejuice for the children. There's two. There's two more. Oh, Robert okay. De Niro. Terrible. Oh, my God. Robert De Niro. Wow. No way. I mean, I'm, okay. I'm going to give a big no to that. He was too busy with Goodfellas. You talking to me? You talking to me? Yeah. It's... No, wait. I mean, he... You talking to Please, please. Are you, ta- are you talking to Please be talking to me. Say please say my, say my name. <laughs> say my name. Say my name. Say my name. Say my name. And no one is I do like the here. Oh, yeah. I, so but I don't there... think. Yeah, no, he was amazing in Cape Fear. Yeah, the original Cape oh, Fear I love is Cape Fear. Is, is Are better. you kidding me? Yeah, I, yes, hundred percent. I really like. That, I, but so I watched made that worth worth. I watched yeah. both Cape Fears for the first time yes. last year to do yeah. the. Um, I did an episode with. I don't remember Andy. Were you on the episode with Ben? No, I wasn't because I Lincoln. hate the the the. Um, I I, I uh, Robert De Niro is brilliant in in Cape Fear, but I just I cannot stand. I, I just don't want to rewatch that movie. Yeah, so um, but I did draw Ben Burgess with a back tattoo. 
Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> As the children demanded, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I also, I also I never ask me every day. Draw Ben Burgess with a back tattoo, please. I'm like, no, I, I did it already. Dad. I didn't Did you give I didn't, us what we want already. I didn't realize as a kid because I remember I watched the Cape Fear with an E episode of The Simpsons, <laughs> um, which is one of the Sideshow Bob episodes. And I didn't realize like how much of that episode was taken directly from the dialogue of Cape Fear. I don't know. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, right, the last there's one last one, and it's John Cleese. I, I think John Cleese could have been an interesting 80s John Cleese. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I thought it would have been different. I think it would have. I think it mm-hmm. honestly might have been. Funnier, but not as awesome. Yeah, you would have been yeah. too tall I mean, for that goddamn model town, though. Let me tell you. <laughs> Am I right, folks? <laughs> too tall. He's too tall for that. Tall no, dude. <laughs> Tip your bartenders. I'm just now. I'm thinking about him in Faulty Towers, where he's yeah, like, losing uh, his mind yeah, the whole time. That was this era, right? Yeah, yeah. It was in the seventies. No, that was in the seventies. That that was uh, that was before movie star era John Cleese. Mm-hmm. All right, it, so, were, there, were, were there other casting choices for Lydia? Do you, oh, let, let me. I'll, oh, I'll yeah. Go Schwarzenegger. By the way, <laughs> I, I don't want to sound like a dick. I like this bit better when I do it. I think it moves faster, but that's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> oh. okay. I like the bit. I like the bit. It needs to move along quicker, though. Thank you. you I get think we're I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're Did you bored. get the instructions? <laughs> I'm sorry. You could have looked it up. There was a there's a pause there, and I looked it up. Yeah. I had it. Okay, well, that's all good. Fine, fine. Next time we do a slideshow, I, I, I'm all ears. We will have. Um, uh, can I say the first one though? Because I'm excited about the first one. Yeah. Yes. Juliet Lewis. Probably. Wow. Okay. Like that could have been really interesting. That would have been interesting. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't. I feel like I'm producing the movie. I don't dislike that. That's good. And she, but back to Kate Fear. Playing, she, like, she was great in that know, movie. She's not known for playing like average female characters anyway. She's known for, she's got, you know, a bit of diversity in her back pocket. But now she's mm-hmm. like showing off like Russell Brand clips. And I'm like, oh, fuck. What if they, what if they switched it out? Right. And uh, Juliette Lewis played Lydia. Robert De Niro played Beetlejuice, and then they, oh. they flipped it out. And then there was there was Winona Ryder and uh, Winona Ryder and fucking Michael Keaton in Cape Fear. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that could have worked. <laughs> uh, I need some time to process that. Can we circle back. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna let, I'm gonna let you cycle through them if you want to. I, Honestly, we should do like an episode called "What If" every month and just like do our own casting picks. That's good. I'm yeah, down. That's good. Uh, was there anyone? So Julia Lewis is fascinating. Anyone else that uh, on that list? I feel like Molly Ringwald yeah. would be too old. Molly Ringwald was on the list, but oh, wow, yeah. right? Justine Did Bateman. Molly Ring- hmm. Oh, uh, Justine Bateman. Okay. Uh, sure, okay. Lori Laughlin, if you remember from Full House. <laughs> she would have been too oh. old, though. Um, too old? Yeah, maybe so. Because a couple years later, she was. Um, it's like uh, that first Spider-Man movie where everyone's supposed to be teenagers and they're like 28. It's like, yeah, wow, you're in high school? Yeah. <laughs> she, 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 I love the film. Don't get me wrong. She was but. like... Do you think she's going to come out of prison with, film, a, with like a jail tattoo, like a jailhouse, like, you know... <laughs> isn't she still in prison She's right going to come out with a pain don't hurt tattoo, actually. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> it's going right, to be awesome. Uh, Brooke Shields. Mm. Also she too old. college. But- she well, she would be in her early twenties when she know, would have done. She might have been a. I mean, I don't I know. know. Well, like my dad really met her all the time. She was a teenager in the early eighties, so <clears throat> I remember. Um, wait, uh, did, didn't uh, what was that comic book movie she did uh, with um, Brooke uh, Shields? Star. Oh, did like, like that? Yeah, that was uh, nineteen eighty nine. <laughs> a year later. No, I've never. I don't um, know that. Why am I? Uh, I, I just don't feel like her acting a bit. Like Brooke Shields is not the best actress. Like she just isn't. I love her brows, but she's just not the yeah. best actress. I mean, she's beautiful, but like I never thought thought of her as like a great thespian. But I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, is, she's, is Winona? Yeah. Uh, uh, here's a question: Is Winona Ryder's performance in her performance is good, but is it a performance that someone else? Um, could also do i don't think necessarily that she's it doesn't take a lot to 
Because I, I think Winona Ryder is a good actress, but in this movie specifically, she's kind of just like a god. A moody right? teenager. Like, not- but is it, so here's the thing. Here's what I would say. It's an archetype, but it's an archetype that didn't really exist. Okay, cool. In uh, popular media uh, at the time. Um, yeah. Unless you're thinking of um, goths. Like a, a different age. The first goths. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because think about like, um, because this is before Heather's, right? I mean, this is this is like this um, is right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they, they, this is there wasn't a lot of goth representation in movies <laughs> at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mostly punchlines, if I remember correctly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, all right. You ready for the next one? I have yeah. so many. Yes, Sarah me. Jessica Parker. <laughs> oh. What? Get the fuck Girl, out of here. Not, she can not play goth. There's zero percent chance she can play goth. Get the entire fuck out of my office right now. No, no, don't no you, way. T- don't Carrie, you talk to me no. that way. I, I wonder how many of these I wonder how many of these are just like suggestions that got floated and how many of these like actually like I doubt a lot of these how actors many of them actually audition. Yeah. yeah. Look, yeah. I, I think Sarah Jessica Parker's good, but not for Lydia Deeds. No. Yeah. yeah. No, I but it does seem like something bubbly, like like uh, would come across. Like, I don't yeah. want to yeah. undercut her either. I'll be best friend if she had a best friend or something like that. Mm-hmm. Oh so <laughs> again, remember Beetlejuice with Lydia Deeds's up Beat best friend Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Where's uh, that cut? Release, release the upbeat best friend cut. <laughs> Wait, why doesn't she have any friends? Hold on. Well, <laughs> well, that's like, yeah, like, you know how, like, you know how, like, not. there's always that trope of like the goth girl like managing to have like one best friend, and, and there's always someone who's like the complete opposite of her. Like yeah. that's mm-hmm. that's something that's common, but yeah, it's I'm true. like, imagine oh. if Beatles just had that. That would just been Sarah Jessica weird. Parker can play that. Who yeah, are you ready has, for the next one? Who, who even yes. this whole this is an entire movie of people with no friends. The only person who has a friend is <laughs> is Dahlia, and it's Otho, and he's literally scamming her for money. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is a, that's a very good point, actually. Well, yeah. and Catherine O'Hara's character, like she has minions, you know, she has minions, but like she doesn't have yeah. friends really. Like, yeah, but they're not even her. really, and they don't even like her. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they exactly. They're not even particularly enamored of her. Mm-hmm. Like they, everyone just feels they have something to gain by being around her. You know, sad. Yeah. Anyway, mm-hmm. Erica. Justine Bateman. Yeah, Justine Bateman. <laughs> yeah, Justine Bateman. Justine Bateman. I'm like <laughs> spitting him out now. Uh, okay, and I'm only going to mention one more. Okay. Um, Jennifer Connelly is the last. Yeah. Oh. Um, I am 100% down for that. But yes. I, I feel yeah. I am biased. So. Her acting yes, top, that. Your yeah. 1988 self wanted that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. I, I'm, 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 I'd be here for it. What's this clip, Forrest? Oh no, it's not a clip. It was just. It's just a. Did we say I wanted, I great a, flat top? By the way, by Otho. I, uh, I I had I did have a I, I had a bit that I kind of wanted to do, um, or like a continuation no! that I yeah. wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you're better at the bits. I didn't ask to do it. You just didn't have the thing pulled up. I don't like doing. Talk that. it to us, Forrest. You don't yeah, listen you're lucky to him. I'm on this show, man. This right, has been so a rough week. Don't listen to him. We have a long history on this show. Of Conan being on, and uh, and <laughs> it was a good run, everybody. We have a long history of the show of Conan being on, hating on Hans Zimmer, right? Yes. This this Act. gives us a, an opportunity to talk about Danny Elfman, um, who is fantastic. Yeah. Danny Elfman is if, if somehow rated exactly right, and maybe a little underrated too. Yeah, especially with his solo music. Uh, absolutely, and I like Gongo Bongo too, but I think it's a separate conversation. But yeah. as the Tim Burton, Danny Elfman axis of awesome. Yes. I, I think really kind of came to a, 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 a important uh, apex here that they, they, they ran that for a while and uh, with diminishing returns later on. But I, th- I think that th- those are two things that, you know, it's, it's yeah, like, I think, uh, I think the Batman score, it, right? you know, he, he, he hit like, yeah. he, that was his John Williams moment. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Anyway, sorry for us. Go ahead. No, so I, I wanted to get your opinion on Danny Elfman and then play the clip of uh, of Tim Burton talking about the Hell you yeah. know, scoring the Beatles, the Beatles just thing. But I, I think it's interesting, right? Because those are kind of the two biggest, um, two of the biggest composers that you really can, you know, point out by name. I mean, like, there's, I mean, there's plenty of other people Hans that do Zimmer. film scores that, yeah, Hans no, Zimmer. Hans Zimmer and, 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 and Danny Elfman. <laughs> That's and, and, the and, uh, and John, John Williams. Williams. And John, John Williams, yes. I guess. But also, <laughs> I guess he just did Star Wars and. You know, Raiders of the Lost Ark, whatever. So some, you know, a few obscure indie thoughts. movies, you know, whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are those? Jurassic Park. 
<laughs> My wife and I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Sure, 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 sure. Go ahead, shoot. Well, for instance, uh, what are your qualifications? Ah, well, I attended Juilliard. I'm a graduate of the Harvard Business School. I travel quite extensively. I lived through the Black Plague, and I had a pretty good time during that. I've seen The Exorcist about 167 times, and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it. Not to mention the fact that you're talking to a dead guy. Now, what do you think? You think I'm qualified? Michael Keaton, at that point, um, you knew him because you'd worked with him? Or? That's what I had Michael no, Jobbing. I, I had actually wanted Sammy Davis Jr. to play, but the studio <laughs> said no. <laughs> oh, but I'm glad. I mean, because he was great. I, I, I really didn't know his work very, very well. I knew I'd seen a few things and stuff, but just when I met him, and, and it was just such a great energy, you know, and just talking to him. And like I said, just, just, just he's got such a great sense of improv that it just, you know, uh, as soon as I met him, you know, that was it. So this is the, the first of, of several collaborations with Michael Keaton, but also it's the first time that you work with Danny Elfman. Mm -hmm. No, I worked with him on oh, Pee Wee's yeah. Big Adventure. Right. Yeah, that was that was his first kind of big movie score. That was my first. And so I used to go see him in band when he was, you know, performing with his band Oingo Boingo in clubs in L.A. And just something about his music that even though it was kind of whatever kind of music you could call it, it still it had a sort of a cinematic quality, which uh, so. that, that's an interesting way to describe whatever kind of music you'd call it, you know, like, all right, big fan, I guess. But. <laughs> <laughs> I used to go see him in clubs and, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not I would up call there. it genre it bending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like synergy, symbiosis, right? I mean, uh, Danny Elfman and Tim Burton, especially this classic era. I mean, like it's they're intrinsically linked, not just with those movies, but with the cinematic experience, as far as I'm concerned. So, What's as, as, as much as I talk trash about Hans Zimmer because he's a hack, <laughs> Danny Elfman is fantastic. Come on the show, Danny Elfman. Thank you. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> And uh, Hans Zimmer, if you wanted to come on the show, we would we would find a reason for Conan to get floated <laughs> on an iceberg for a day. <laughs> oh, I thought you said I could pull a Ben Burgess and debate him, which would be great. Oh, you, that would be funny. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. People think they want Ben Burgess versus Crowder or something. No, no, you want Hans Zimmer versus Conan. Who the Neutron. fuck wants Ben Burgess versus Crowder? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Literally the first name Conan I thought Peter of. versus Jackson Hinkle. That's what, that's what the folks really want. I feel well, like I the lost best. years of my life versus watching. Shapiro. I feel like I I lost oh, years of Too I many lost bands. years of my life watching Sam Cedar debate Jackson Hinkle, and it was pointless, and it was stupid, and I did not like it. I, I literally it. debate <laughs> yeah. reviews, man. I'm like, I'm gonna be the last person to debate this re to review this debate. <laughs> oh, why? I'm really I'm happy that we did brought up that scenario, but I stand by it nonetheless. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy that we do this and we don't, you know, review debates because debates are pointless. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> most of them, except for Hans Zimmer versus Conan Neutron, should be fucking awesome. Yeah, no, because <laughs> I have informed critiques, and he would not know who I am, and that gives me the advantage. <laughs> why are you such a why are you such a hack and then he has to answer <laughs> he's already on the defensive and you're yeah, coming exactly. in with the cobra strike it's a yeah danny elfman is like, you're great danny you're wonderful beautiful love yeah you. danny elfman you're cool you're, you're cool. doing amazing sweetie you. <laughs> john williams you're cool <laughs> yeah john williams you're cool danny elfman you're cool also um green revel you're cool our, uh... I don't hate him. He's just a hack. <laughs> hack to, look up the definition of the word hack. He is a hack. And like the fact that he is like so impressed with himself over the Dune score where it's like, man, come on. That is like what any like what can you do with Dune as a if, score? If right? I unless you're Wikipedia, unless you're Toto with his picture there. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> like I, I don't know. You know what? I'm I, I distract from this show too much already. I I uh I retract my criticism. Please, Forrest. So, the so next two, two or whatever people we haven't with. talked about in this movie. Um, 80s Alec Baldwin? I'm ready. Let's go, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what Alec Baldwin and yeah. Gina Davis are both in this. And I think Gina Davis, the queen. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, Gina Davis is kind of doing what she does best. I think that she's very well cast in this. Alec Baldwin kind of delivers a surprise performance. If you look at like what Alec Baldwin looked like um, when this, movie, when this movie came out, right? Like there, there's interviews, there's like cast interviews. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play this full cast interview because it's kind of pointless. But if I can find it for a second, um, 
he he kind of like his look his look at this time is completely different than than what he looks like in this right like he he kind of yeah, has think- like the the thing with his chest hair out and he's like kind of doing like the bad boy leather jacket look and then you see him in this movie and he's kind of like uh kind of like sim- square like he's kind of, yeah he's, he's playing, playing basically well. against type right not that he yeah. really had a type at the point but he's playing against type yeah I, I guess that's my my full point with that. And, but, and then um, he was also Jack Ryan a year later. Uh, I think the same year or the year later um, in Time for October. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and uh, another yeah. thing to note, forgot about think that. about the fact that the titular character in in Beetlejuice uh, is not in the movie that much. Glenn Gary Glenn Ross, which one of my favorite movies of all time. Alec Baldwin is like in it for like eleven minutes, maybe. Like it's, but he has a speech that unfortunately some people don't are just like, Oh, I earnestly believe that. But he has like one of like the great all time speeches in that film. And he credit or credits do no matter who he shot, whatever freaking awesome speech. Like, I mean, like, and he delivers it. He delivers it in a way that when you see uh, Jack lemons uh, character, just deflate, like his soul deflates, like while it's happening, like it's just, that's uh, that's why we go to the movies, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is my this is my Alec Baldwin clip that I pulled. Um, this is from one of those. I like that they do these like retrospectives where they take somebody through all of their most iconic roles and they ask them about each one. Makes mm-hmm. this show. You know, Can you please fairly. touch your dick while you're answering too? Thanks. In <laughs> Listen, okay, I got an itch going on. I, I can't, I can't, I can't help it. There's an itch, and I got to scratch it. Lemon, I've got. An itch. <sighs> There's a reason why the gun went off. Okay, enough. enough. The thing I remember most is Michael. I mean, Michael came and Keaton knew the secret because I would act and then I'd have some doubts and I'd say, well, maybe I this, maybe I that. I was much more neurotic about what I would do when I was very young, starting off in films. And Keaton just came out. He was like the comedy Annie Oakley. He was like, whoa, (laughs) the mirror. (laughs) He just was so self-assured he was so aged just tore it up and we were doing a scene that's in (laughs) the movie where he spits the loogie into his jacket which he completely improvised he's like hey what do you mean like that hey whatever and he's saying his lines he goes save that one for later and he said the line save that one for later and i thought i was going to choke i was laughing so hard off (laughs) i'm really gonna have to get to know you guys you know we gotta get closer move in with you for a while get to be real pals you know what i'm saying Later, My wife and I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Sure, sure, sure. sure, sure. Go ahead. Shoot. Well, for instance, uh, what are your qualifications? Ah, well, I attended Juilliard. Keaton amazed me. And we did the movie with Tim, who would sit at a desk when we were at the old Culver Studios. And Tim would draw the characters. He would draw things. I mean, he's an illustrator. He's an artist. And he would draw. And he would never look up at me. And I would say... You know, Tim, everybody else is there has got a thing they're doing. And I know you want the dead people to be the most colorless people. Then the really frightening people are the living people. You want the ghost to be the most banal or whatever his language was. And I said, uh, I-, I think I need to come up with something where I'm like Robert Cummings. I want to, I want to, if you know Robert Cummings, the old actor, I mean, he's a very posh kind of elegantly spoken man. I just had a hook into it. You know, my wife and I are, we don't have any children and I collect antiques and I wanted to be sort of a guy who talked like this and I was going to do this whole kind of campy thing. And Tim is looking down at a piece of paper and maybe this is the only direction Tim gave me the entire movie. He would look up and go, no, don't do that. <laughs> and go back down to the and go. You know, when you do those movies with people who are those visualists like Tim, you just trust them. You know, you're doing the movie and they say, we're going to give you the old age makeup and Gina and I had the very, uh, you know, kind of skull-like construct they put on us. You know, they put the straws up your nose so you can breathe, and they put the casts on you, and they do all the life casts and everything. It's, uh, it was the first time I think I'd experienced that. You know, you never mind that when you're in the hands of somebody who's as gifted as Tim. I've done, not a lot, but I've done a couple of films where we did that, and I was like, why don't we just cut the scene? You know what I mean? I'm like, we just don't need this. And uh, when we did Beetlejuice, I had no idea what it was about. I thought maybe all of our careers are going to end with the release of this film. We're all going to be <laughs> dead. But um, when you were around Tim, he was just such a kind of a crazy professor. You know, his uh, 
when we did that scene in the and, and Char Boy was there. And uh, he offers me a cigarette. He's like, cigarette? I forget the lines. He's like, cigarette? And I say, no, no, I, I've, uh, I don't smoke. You want a cigarette? Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to cut down myself. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, we couldn't handle it. You know, we just was like cracking up all the time. That's one of the earliest movies I made, and, and you... You see everything that's involved in making movies brought to bear on a movie like that. By the way, as, as far as <laughs> as far as direction goes, that's that's pretty great too. Yeah, yeah. Don't, yeah. don't do that. Well, uh, <laughs> we saw, we, we heard uh, we heard Michael Keaton explain this whole thing. That's right? America like, direction. Yeah. I could totally hear you saying that. By the way, go ahead. <laughs> Sounds like me. But like no, but like, we we heard the whole thing about Michael Keaton not knowing what Tim Burton was going to think and not knowing. You know what was going to happen with that, and then coming out and and Tim Burton being like, "Yes," and then to have like Alec Baldwin be like, "Okay, here's my here's my idea. I'm going to come out," and Tim Burton just be like, "No," and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the man the man's got a uh, a vision, right? And yeah, you know, I, I I don't like talking too much about recent Tim Burton stuff because I just don't like it that much, and I yeah. think it's it's got the Sweet artifice. Was good though. Was it? What was? Yeah. What was? Yeah, yeah but you talk. like musicals, so I'm going to need a, another opinion. What was uh, it? Well, here's the thing. As someone who knows musicals and what you need to do to make it into a successful movie, you need to take what makes it a stage show out of it. And that's why I prefer Sweeney Todd over most of the modern, like, most recent musicals, like movie musicals out all there. Right, all right. Oh, Sweeney Todd. I, I, to oh, be I fair, I haven't shit. seen it. I didn't. I, I like didn't. I didn't I didn't dislike Sweeney Todd. I think it was, I mean, I, I'm not saying it was great, but like. The fake blood is just the worst part of the whole movie, though. Yeah. So bad. I, I, don't, think least, it was, I don't think it was. I mean, it but even bad. then, the effects that were used for Beetlejuice are just way better than like what is used today. Like everything is so like computer generated now when they use like stop motion capture or like like stop motion animation to do a lot of the like, uh, like special effects. Yeah, well, so we so we can talk over this. I have um, uh, just literally. Oh, uh, Forrest, video. we can talk over everything. You've heard this show, right? No, but no. So I just literally have like video <laughs> footage of them putting together the giant snake, and uh, dude, it's, cool. It's not, I mean, it's not even worth playing the audio to it. Like you can't really hear what the guy's even saying. But it, the the it's cool to watch the video footage of it. It's cool um, to watch giant snakes. This is very bright, by the way. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, so Ooh. here. Andy can narrate this. The the, the funny thing is the uh, Wikipedia page. Uh, uh, oh, Andy's going to narrate a completely different thing over it. Oh, Moon Baby. Moon Baby. Moon Baby, yeah. Moon baby looks, looks like uh, looks looks a lot like. Operates the snake. Is that a robotic dick? What is? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> the tongue. Is that is that the queen from Alien? <laughs> no. Venom. It oh, it's the one bad. that's okay. It's the beetle. Oh, one. I was yeah, thinking it was the sand yeah, yeah, yeah. snakes. Oh my they're... god, he's gonna shoot up a school. Watch out for this guy. I heard <laughs> they had to do that. I heard he they had to do that sleep? twice. He shoot up a school. Doesn't look happy. <laughs> no, they <laughs> can you shoot up the school again, the please? Time... That you didn't get all the kids. <laughs> the first time they created all right, that Jake, puppet. Shoot up the school a second time. <laughs> the first time they created that puppet, it didn't look like Michael Keaton. At all, oh, it didn't look like his character at all. So they had to like re oh, wow. rework it. Ooh, hey. So it would look at least a little bit like that, the Beetlejuice character that Michael. Th Keaton that's what created. after every show when like we're hanging out after the show. That's what every dude trying to talk like Erica looks like. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey, hey, so yeah, you playing trying, guitar? You trying, to, you're trying to you trying to come back with me? I'm uh, yeah, I'm about to I'm about to you know hit a couple spots up. There's an after party. <laughs> I saw that you play the guitar. Let me explain to you how to play the guitar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh. ah. oh, no, he's gonna shoot up another school. He's gonna shoot at <laughs> Ronald Reagan. Ronald well, Reagan, watch. <laughs> he's got what? the John Hinckley glass. Why, why is that in this documentary? What's the purpose of that scene? <laughs> what the fuck? Like, what was, who was that for? Yo, that's, hey, don't cut out nice, the part where I'm yawning. Nice or I'm, nice I'm fucking diamond walk. back rattlesnake texture. I think, that's yeah. good. Yeah, good texture. God. Maybe that was the only shot they had of that one guy with the mullet. So, you know. Who titled this? I don't know. All right. Who, it's good. Who it's filmed it's a great... this? 
I'm asking, wow. who the fuck built this? Hey. I'm once again I... asking, who the fuck filmed this Beetlejuice extra? <laughs> <laughs> this must just be some random footage that good. somebody happened to get that they were like, hey, let's put it together. There is, what, there is you want to have me play Pantatonic? <laughs> hand me that guitar, I'll play it for there you. There is audio. The audio is just <laughs> the audio is just so bad that like I didn't... Oh, no. What, the... <laughs> Again, what is going on here? I don't know. He's dying, no... apparently. <laughs> he got shot! <laughs> He's too tired. The snake venom finally hit him. <laughs> All right, well, yeah. there you go. That's that's the world's weirdest short film. <laughs> Everybody, congratulations! You know, it it's the one, it's the one Alec Baldwin. It's the one Alec Baldwin directed. He's he's like Tim. Is it good? Is my short film good? I just want it to be good, Tim. And Tim's like, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Just stop doing that, please. Thank you. Don't do that. You like it sounds kind of in that clip like uh Alec Baldwin kind of got domed by uh by Tim Burton like it's the first time he's ever been told no. Oh, he's Tim like, Burton probably gave exactly zero fucks about Alec Baldwin who was on the upswing at the time. Yeah, so, but like yeah. so probably had nobody saying, like, telling him no. He, he's like you know? he's like he was a genius. He said the first thing no one ever said to me. Yeah. No. He told me no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cuz you really well, be fine line between Donald his... Trump and Alec Baldwin. <laughs> And I can't believe that Alec Baldwin and Winona Ryder worked again on, on a Great Balls of Fire, even though they rarely interacted. Sweaty, sweaty balls of fire. Mm-hmm. Can I, can we get back on the the important topic of the I miss Betty snake? White? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Betty White <laughs> as Beetlejuice. Bill, well, Betty White. She would have nailed the it. No, there's no question. <laughs> Dude, Betty White as Beetlejuice. I'm sorry. I'm fucking. I, I, it's the only movie I'll ever be okay with a CGI character being in. <laughs> yes. she, can, she can do no wrong. The Beetlejuice snake, I think, is fantastic. And I think yeah. works really well uh, in the dreamlike atmosphere that Tim Burton creates. But also, like, it's a good example of, like, look, we talked about practical effects this month, right? We had a lot yeah. of movies that are all like, you know, legend. Story the D practical effects like you know B plus A minus right yeah like like it, it's all about you know this is like the last era and this is why these movies are so much more fun to talk about than like modern yeah. movies in a lot of ways and one of the reasons why is for things like the fucking Beetlejuice thing hey like it's it's our titular character but he's like a weird kind of cartoon snake yeah all right yeah. great Tim Burton sounds good we'll craft it now and like there's gonna be a guy yawning while we make a documentary of it fantastic. <laughs> Who looks like John Hinckley. But um, no, but like, you know, w- one of the most fascinating parts about it also is that we watched Junior Neverland. Meatloaf over there. We did our RIP. We did we did our we did our we're not for a legend. We did we did that we did our uh never ending story episode, and one thing that I found fascinating is that one of the German guys was talking about how blue screen had just been invented, right? Like right, new technology the, yeah. at the time. Yeah. So technology. throughout this Throughout this decade, they start to be able to use, um, as you know, Time Bandits was obsessed with computers. Um, <laughs> this to, new uh, concept, yeah, to, to well, just to do yeah, you know, movie look, making. Look, if, if evil had his way, he would start with lasers day one. That's an important thing to remember. <laughs> God, or you know, the the supreme being doesn't care about computers. Confirmed. Um, <laughs> he made forty two species of cockatoo. He does not. He doesn't care about computers. He doesn't. That's he doesn't. Exactly. So, um, <laughs> which is, which is more information about time bandits than we got out when the, these are bad movies girls were on that show. <laughs> I had to cut out thirty minutes of us just laughing. <laughs> I'll love, but I'm not wrong. Yes, um, no, but so I find it. I kind of find it fascinating to track this decade because this is kind of a decade that these you know new technologies, I guess, are being developed, and as they're being developed, you know, the thought starts to be how can we use this for movie making. And how can we make our jobs easier? And I don't think making their jobs easier necessarily makes anything better. In fact, a lot of times it makes things worse in the beginning. Still, I'd say in some cases, I'm not against CGI filmmaking, but like practical effects are much more interesting to me, I think, than just being able to like create a model on a computer. It takes months at times to come up with something. Yeah. Make it have the final product. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's kicking in for you, isn't it? It, it isn't seems it? like, yeah, that's <laughs> kicking in. But it, it, it just seems like the practical. You did, did warn us. 
<laughs> she did warn us. Yeah. Coming on, that she had taken but trazodone. But it seemed like when it comes to like the I've taken trazodone and I don't need it, and I've taken it one time, and I literally was asleep for twelve hours. So I, I you know, it's, it's not good stuff. <laughs> now Walter we can reveal the uh, bleach blonde mullet and the glasses. Sure seems like it. Hmm. But um, <laughs> with the practical oh. effects, it seems like it was so much bigger, like in the eighties. Like that's when it really like like came to came to be or whatnot. And it just seemed like it just came and went really fast. Well, like, uh, well, and the reason why I would say is that uh, it both like Jurassic Park and T2 were kind of like the slint of CGI, right? Which is to say that those movies are fantastic, but it led to a bunch of imitators doing the same thing, but terribly and for worse purposes. And you get a lot of people that are using it because it's easier and like, hey, we can do a thing this way, but it doesn't have the same intent and heart that the original has. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You don't have to agree with me, Christina, but I appreciate that you did. No, but I mean that you're <laughs> right, though. That's the thing. Well, print stickers of it, put them everywhere around. Kona Neutron was right. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so I have, I have one more. Practical effects. That's why we're talking about these fucking movies, because the practical yeah. effects don't, don't age. Or when they do age, they age in a good way. They age in a yeah, way that's like, mm -hmm. this is cool. Like, As opposed you still to like, can't believe that's like, whoa, that's not all computers. They actually like took months putting this shit together. <laughs> Yeah, there yeah. Was, in some I mean, cases like, it was a puppet. I mean, not this movie, but well, kind of. Yeah, I mean, it was, look yeah. at Dark Crystal, like right? Yeah. The the fucking guy with the stilts, like he's all jumping around, running around on the on the set, like I Don't mean, on trip the stilts. And ball, people. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> or the Dark yeah. Crystal yet? If you're yeah. gonna trip, find a nice quiet space. You know, really. Yeah, just I was gonna yourself. say <laughs> that motherfucker like risked life and limbs so a bunch of millennials could like like trip on mushrooms and like watch him watch him if i can be in a scene for like 5.7 seconds looking at you looking at you andrea she had a stream today on mushrooms apparently i didn't Fantastic. i didn't watch it but apparently had a stream on um so she's watching, she's watching her. Her. Wow. first of all i believe you <laughs> she's watching herself on mushrooms even like you know what i mean like that's, it's not even that just, seems that's that's there is your like, own reflection while you're on the influence of shrooms yeah that seems like a very terrible idea but what no, it's not i think we should all take shrooms and watch that episode and then broadcast that on twitch <laughs> yeah. I, look, man i feel like i'm on shrooms right now let me tell you isn't that really just what twitch is though like twitch is just like you yes in a, in a certain point watching someone else's video and they're watching someone else's yeah. video, and it just is a never-ending story of that. But it's um, like, it's it's like watching someone react to their own debate, reacting to their own debate, reacting to their own debate, and I'm like, there's just the most, too the most amazing, the most amazing one that I've ever been part of is um. I'm gonna make Michael, an NFT of you saying that, by the way. Thank you, <laughs> My, Michael. Michael set it up uh, on TMBS so that there was Anna Gasparian reacting to Dave Rubin yeah. reacting to a video of Anna Gasparian. Yeah, and I remember th that was the first time we ever hit a um, hundred thousand views on a video. Was because people were like, "Oh, I want to see Anna Gasparian reacting to Dave Rubin reacting to Anna Gasparian." <laughs> guess that, what? That... Guess what? Guess what? I reacted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you see the uh, Ben Burgess one where he he had uh, yeah. it was him reacting to uh, you know him and his guests reacting to um, uh, Destiny. Reacting to Ben Burgess and his guest reacting to a debate of destiny and somebody else. Nope, and I never will. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um... reaction to reaction to reaction. <laughs> so I have one more. Clip. I'm exhausted just talking. And about now it. I'm lost. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have one more. One more clip from Beetlejuice, the movie that we're talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I guess. Uh, two, right? I wait, guess. What was I? Catherine O'Hara met her husband. Um, making Beetlejuice. So I have I have a clip oh, of them really? talking about their courtship on the set of Beetlejuice. Oh. Who and was the, the production the, designer? Courtship? What is this? The 1800s? It was a courtship. <laughs> it was a court. If you watch this clip, this is this is a classic movie set courtship. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fucking gentleman, Carlo over here. It you wasn't set up. Cute. It wasn't predestined. It happened organically. And uh, you like, know, there's a snake involved. No, um, but after this, I'll go to I'll go to Conan Neutron's famous bit, um, letterbox one liners, and then you know, we're talking about more and more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask, and this is a question that Courtney from Facebook had as well. 
Tell us the story of how you met on the set of Beetlejuice. Well, Bo was there when I got there. Thank you. Uh, uh, actually, Glenn Chaddix, God bless him, took me around when I got there. He was the, the social director of, of yes, Shakespeare. Yes, he was. And continued to be until yeah. he passed away. He would always get us together at least once a year um, for years. Uh, but the, my first day, I guess I met with Tim and then I met Glenn, who was just staying there hanging around having fun. He took me to every department to meet everyone. So he actually introduced me to Bo first and, and everyone in the art department. And then um, on the set, you know, we'd talk and laugh and, and I was really falling for him. Um, and, but he did, never asked me out. And then- it's a, little, it's a little awkward though, isn't it? it? I mean, you're in the cast, right. you're on, uh, on the, the this is my craft second, side. My second job as a production designer. Uh, you know, and I'm low 30s. And it just never occurred to me that you were even supposed to talk to the talent much less. You know, I thought I'm the guy who makes sets. And uh, so she would talk to me. Like you never dated actors before. <laughs> no, I, I didn't really. You're still telling no. this story. I didn't. I didn't. No. No. <laughs> you used to say you didn't think you should date actors. And I'd say, it's well, okay, no, I'm not really an actor. But, but people... Yeah. No, I didn't think you were supposed to, quite honestly. You weren't attracted to me. It's I mean, okay. It's no, okay. no. I remember being in my office when Glenn Glenn uh, first took Catherine around, and I saw, I heard Glenn's booming voice down the hall. <laughs> and down here is the... And then I saw Glenn walk by, and then I saw this beautiful woman just flash by the door, and I went, what the heck was oh, that? Good. That must be Catherine O'Hara. Oh, you're good. Okay. And uh, now I'm coming, I'm fixed, I'm changing. Really, I don't care. And it's all good. Right. It's good. It's coming along well. well. No, that three months went by of shooting, but we would talk on the set. It was like high school. We talked to me today. He talked to me for three minutes. He talked to me for seven minutes. And then uh, and then the art department, Bo and the art department, went ahead uh, to, where were we shooting? We, we shot everything on stage, and then we went to... Uh, Vermont to shoot That's right. the exterior of the house and the town and the school. Right. So while you were gone, bridge. we continued shooting stuff on stage. Yeah. And uh, Tim and I were chatting one day, and he had a girlfriend on the set. And he was having a good time. He kept coming to work with Hickey's. Hope he <laughs> his, girl, his girlfriend was <laughs> yeah. Captain Harris, Bill yeah. the This is yeah. just getting better and better. I love her so much. <laughs> um, no, sorry. So, so uh, Tim and I are chatting about life and love, and I said, "What about you?" And I said, "Oh, production designer." Oh, well, he keeps talking to me every day, but he won't ask me out. Let me see what I can do. <laughs> so I got to Vermont, and we were shooting on your uh, set. We have the model of this. It's great. Uh, the set that goes out from the house. What's that called? What did you call that? Oh, I don't know what you call that. It's it's like a it deck a with no roof. It was like a porch. weird postmodern gesture. Right. That was tacked onto the Victoria. I mean, onto that farmhouse. Basically. And we were shooting at Jeffrey and uh, Glenn and I were shooting a scene out there. And and you came up to me on some break and said, oh, the art department's going to a swap meet tomorrow. You want to come with us? <laughs> 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 like you've been told, you ask her now. No, Tim had so come up to me. That was your said, first day. Yeah, Tim made him ask Tim me Tim said, great. Uh, Tim was not real vocal. And he said, uh, Bo, um, you should ask Catherine out. <laughs> that, that was lovely and wholesome. And yeah. as I mentioned in our private chat, gives hope to every production assistant ever that they can get with an awesome, hilarious lady who is at the PTR yep. field. There, so this, this was during the pandemic that this... Uh, this video was filmed. So they're like still together. Like they're still married and, mm -hmm. and seem to be like very much oh, having yeah. a, a good time. Like I watched the entirety of, of their intro to Beetlejuice and like, I don't know. It's, it's fascinating. She, <laughs> she left uh CTTV, like, you know, like, um, and the CTV was, is the shit by the way. Yeah. Still holds up so, most of it. So she, she left and didn't know what she was really doing and drove back and forth to audition for, um, for, for Beetlejuice like a bunch of times and eventually like got the role and it seemed What's like that's so what can can like sign her up but like can you think of anyone else like in that role because I can't I no mean, she's like perfect for that role no absolutely not. Me? and she's audition and she's taken that role and kind of turned it into like a whole career right like 
she her characters throughout yeah exactly yeah, like i mean half there half, yeah like, like, yeah. Even her as the mom from home alone kevin you know like she's yeah yeah, yeah very, exactly uh, Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah <laughs> like, and you know, like she, but I mean, she just, Creek, she same kind of Shit's Creek, the same, she's the same kind of character. I mean, I, I haven't watched yep. all of Shit's Creek, but like, it's the same yeah. kind of like, you know, rich. The Holocaust that, denial yeah. episode was really weird, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So you continue. Oh, <laughs> um, no, but so like, I don't know. So I, I just. <laughs> I find the whole thing fascinating, but like I, I wanted to play the fact that she like actually met her. Um, I guess I'll play one more clip from this. They're talking about the Deo scene, and I wanted to talk about that too. So, can, can, can I just say that like whatever show that was, which is like like just something apparently on Instagram because there's hearts going across, you can't see Catherine Hurd's face because there's a, people um, getting so crying. They were in Canada, and it was a showing of Beetlejuice. That I, I forget like, which, uh, which, and this is like a thing associated with that. With that yeah. showing, that's how you yeah, do like yeah. Instagram so, interviews and Instagram lives. Yeah, yeah. Like so, so as someone who's done a music interview show for almost eight years now, those are the kind of ones you're like, "Fuck yeah, let's just like kick back." And that dude is stoked. I, I, who, I don't know that host, but that host is stoked because you don't put any work into it whatsoever. It's like, oh, you're just gonna basically do a show in front of me. Great. Well, <laughs> one, one, one <laughs> sounds part. good. I'll be over here. <laughs> one funny part that I'm not gonna. So it's through TIFF. I don't know, but I don't know what um. I don't, I don't know what that is. I don't care. They, oh, they well, we get a lot of clips from them. Oh, well, then I do care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the clips, Tiff. <laughs> I steal them. Um, no, but so at one point he he's talking to Bo, like her husband, about how he got involved in production design. And then he turns to Catherine O'Hara and is like, So how did you get involved in the film? Like her husband does, which kind of makes it really funny. Like, oh, he doesn't even have to ask that. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, this is this is the last clip I'll play. This is them talking about Deo. Deo, the, probably the most Music memorable Deo. scene. Uh, so good. Like, talk about like you know music and uh, oh, excellent yeah. music placement. I mean, holy shit! Like that. Well, oh, let's play the clip. Let's well, clip. It, I mean, the, the funny part about that scene also is that even when they're trying to do this, like you know, they're doing the full possession, right? And they get grabbed by the shrimp fucking hand, like at the end of it, like. Even when they're trying to do that, they can't be scary. Like it's against the the very uh, fabric of their being. So that kind of makes yeah. it even more. I bet more... they didn't eat shrimp after that ever again. But they seem to love it. They love it. They love they love the shrimp. We love folks. it, folks. We love the shrimp. I haven't eaten a piece of shrimp since I saw this movie. <laughs> uh, speaking of fun, I have to ask you about one of the scenes that's become iconic in Beetlejuice, which is, of course, the Deo dinner party <laughs> dance scene. Catherine, can you talk a little bit about how that uh, that came to be? I understand you had some role in creating that. No, I'm so stupid. I, I really wanted a Bob Marley or Judy Cliff song. <laughs> 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 yeah. What are you doing this old song? So could have worked. But then they didn't listen to me. <laughs> you punk rock crazy, that's <laughs> like, no woman, no cry or something. And uh, um, yeah, so they they got the song Dale, and then we worked with the choreographer a few times, and that was really fun because she sort of uh, this choreographer kind of you know set the whole scene for all of us around the table because that's a lot of people. That's a big shoot when you have, mm -hmm. any dinner scene's a big shoot, but when you're dancing involved, um, so there was a bit of rehearsal for that, and we all got to add our own stupid moves, you know, funny mm -hmm. stuff to, mm -hmm. and that was. Really, really fun. That dinner table with Dick Cavett. Yeah. And yes. Connie at the time she was yeah. married to David to Byrne. David Byrne and, and Glenn Shaddix. Glenn Shaddix. God bless and, him. Uh, oh, no, it was fantastic. It was really and fun. And again, uh, in, in, ha in camera effects underneath that table were... That was the best. Were, how, how many people were there? At each of our place settings. Oh, the at shrimp? At each place setting okay, was a person with a shrimp glove on that came out. Really, just kind of popping up. Yeah. There was a glove, and we knew so when. Puppeteer with a glove. We knew generally when it was supposed to happen in the song. That the you know it was near the end. The shrimp come and grab each of our heads, and we knew it was coming. But it's like your little kid, you know, you know when your parents <laughs> the are jack in the box for yes. fun, and you know it's happening, but you're still scared. And they would get the cue. Somebody would give them a cue. Okay, to all of the there was a guy at each place setting under the table with his hand up like this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right? and, uh, and it was and scary even if you know every it was single time every single time we're like ah! <laughs> it was real it was really fun and the other live effect that uh, i remember is the giant 
uh, snake was a puppet. Oh, yeah. And they wrapped it around me and then pulled it. And then shoot and it in it reverse. Whipped me. Yeah. Yeah, but it whipped me. Yeah, shot in reverse. So it looked like it was coming. But instead, it was wrapped around me. They pull it. They whip me off my feet. And I landed on my back. And again, I'm going to reference again, kids and parents. But when a toddler falls and then they look at you to see if they're hurt. <laughs> yes. And if you go, oh, you fell, then it's okay. <laughs> but everyone on the set looked at me like, and I thought I was, I started crying. <laughs> I didn't get hurt. But I started crying because they looked at me like I was dead. Oh my God. It was appropriate for the movie. <laughs> I love people are trying to put their own questions in the chat. Like anyone's ever going to see them or care in any way, shape, or form. But anyway, that was delightful. Uh, and that is a cool scene. And as mentioned, Forrest, mm -hmm. that is in the intro for Movie Night Fantasia. Yeah. <laughs> Conan got to put his own spin on it. Right. <laughs> he didn't know that's what he was doing, but he did. Not quite Bob in... Marley, but you know. I'm no Bob Marley. You got that right. I'm going to go on Instagram Live with Erica, and we're going to talk about my process. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. When you made the movie night Fantasia soundtrack, what were you thinking? <laughs> well, Erica, I was thinking largely of uh, the classic uh, never ending story theme as well as New Order. But I feel like you got to have the shredding solo that comes in for no reason. Conan, don't give it all away. Oh, yeah, yeah sorry. Erica's, <laughs> yeah, voice yeah, that that got, Erica's voice asking that question got a little deeper than I'm used to. Was, you know, <laughs> just, she's, she's doing her. I don't know, uh, Forrest. Uh, my voice might get a little deeper. Her James Lipton. There we go. Thank you. That's that guy's name. Oh, what yeah, kind of red? That, that, that was the last clip I really, I really wanted to um, play for this. Um, I, I don't know. I, it's always been an iconic scene. The thing that really is the juxtaposition for me is kind of like um, what what that song kind of is trying to express, right? Like the. Um, the, the like the struggle of like banana pickers and you know like the the work that they're doing and then like the suburban up like upper class lifestyle that they're kind of living throughout this movie it's just such a funny juxtaposition when they actually get possessed by that because at the beginning of the movie you're listening to them listen to Harry Belafonte and they're like you know they're kind of doing that as they're packing things up like that's the music they listen to they kind of have this like uh, I guess, connection to like earlier, um, like an earlier time, like the American dream, they're kind of packing up their house and the music reflects that too. And then to have it be like, you know, possessed through this like weird yuppie upper class family is always kind of just yeah. been a yeah, hilarious yeah. Hi hyper commercialized yeah. and that. <laughs> well, and can we give a shout out to uh, brother Harry Belfonte? I, I saw him open for Bernie, the, the, the Oakland. Um, he's, uh, uh, he's been downtown. He's been a he's been a relentless champion. I mean, first for yeah. civil rights. That guy then, puts that, that yeah. guy is he walks the walk, man. Yeah. But, but then also for like economic justice and you know, like all kind of left movements throughout the last few decades. Like he's 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 a fucking powerhouse. He also seems like he'd be like Quincy Jones, where he's just a really good hang, has a million stories about everybody. And it's like that would be yeah. awesome. Yeah. I would like to hang out with Harry Bel Belfonte. It was, pretty, it was pretty fun with Quincy Jones started out, like, hey. started throwing those stories out there in various magazine interviews where he's like, and then you know what happened. And it's like, yeah, Quincy uh, Jones, no, God damn it. Nobody has Quincy, <laughs> Quincy, no. I wonder how they Twitter. got him to like get permission to use the song in the film. Money. Uh, I would imagine a check with a lot yeah. of zeros. Yeah, they probably, yeah. <laughs> And Harry's like, great. Uh, I got a question for like, like, well, um, I work all night and I drink your popular rum. popular again, you know. too. Yeah. But, then, but all right, so. Well, when did Hairspray come out? Hairspray came out in 1988, same year, I think. The movie is Because yeah. yeah. they also had another, uh, <laughs> did they play, um, which Harry, Harry Belafonte song did they play on that? What was it, uh, uh, Dale? They didn't play, no, they didn't play Dale uh, Hairspray. No, 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 no. It was a different Harry, Harry Belafonte song, though. I don't care enough about the information to look it up, but it's not Dale. Uh, the the thing with 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 that scene though, divine and the later scene, to divine no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I don't think that that those scenes I don't think hit the same way if it's a different song. I think the song is very important to. Yeah, yeah. it's just interesting that that you know both the same year to like you know you can you can easily put. Um, Tim Burton and John Waters in kind of a similar uh, spectrum. Although John yeah, Burton is the weirdo that Tim Burton wishes he was. Like his I, I don't, I don't know. Burton. I don't know if that John. John I've never Waters seen Tim Burton tell to someone, do. "Hey, you can totally eat dog shit if you want." <laughs> <laughs> there's no. I don't. There's no. There's no Harry Belafonte song that I can see on the soundtrack for Hairspray. 
But um, well, was it Hairspray? Or was it another another uh, Waters movie? Yeah, I don't know. I it was like yeah, right nobody... about the same time. There, there, there was Hairspray, um... Hairspray is the uh, Chubby Checkers is like the main song that I remember yeah, from yeah. that. But well, um, and, yeah, uh, like is, is Hairspray though. the one with the L seven or is that uh? uh... Yeah, whatever it doesn't matter you know what i don't even care about the answer i'm just, I'm just looking so, at the soundtrack for the original it's not but um i i really i liked i liked hairspray for like entirely different reasons than i liked anything by tim burton like i liked hairspray because it just felt it was just i mean it was quirky but it was quirky in the way that someone who had made like a bunch of nc-17 like like almost pornographic movies in a row making like a, a pg movie is kind of quirky this I feel like Tim Burton is kind of a, a person who kind of has that PG, uh, PG thirteen like you know ethos that besides Sleepy Hollow I guess but like right. Sweeney you know, Todd that, was rated R too. You know that, that's that's creating. Brought to you um, by our sponsor Sweeney Todd apparently. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, if you want a good shave, if you want, good if you want a close shave, <laughs> Otis Sweeney Todd. Uh, so by the way. <laughs> Allow me to pull an Andy World and say that uh, it is Serial Mom that L7 is in as the band Camel Lips playing the song Gas Chamber. Good ass Camel movie, Lips. though. Good ass movie, yeah. Hey, Good ass is, movie, it, though. is it time for the Letterbox one liners? It definitely oh, is. Go. We should, we should yeah. do that because we're, we're going long. <laughs> we're going long. Because, folks. because it's enough. <laughs> Just thought we've I'd given, ask. We've given Once you we a, invoke uh, Camo Lips, it is time for the Letterbox Reviews. We've this given you long. an Otho a level great band of, name. Of, of content. Um, dude, can you imagine what Otho's podcast would be like? Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was a podcast host long, long before that was a thing. <sighs> <laughs> it would be it would shit about it. LLB like, once again. <laughs> yeah, it would be either the best or worst thing ever, and maybe in the same episode. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, hundred percent. All right, letterbox one liners. I'm ready to go. That's right, for us. So we have this bit we do on this show. It's the letterbox one liners. Letterbox place for film. <laughs> bottom up democracy. The only social media site that matters and is a bunch of people <laughs> that are into film talking at with and to each other about the movies that they love or don't love, and they react to it. Uh, this isn't something that says no lords, no masters, uh, no. Big time movie critics, everyone gets to have their say. People get to get to have a laugh, if you will. People get to uh, come up with something poignant, something funny, but most importantly, something for us to react to on this show, Movie Night Extravaganza, Letterboxd. It's, it, 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 it's more fun than it seems. <laughs> <laughs> has there ever been a movie that has been as balanced in its wholesomeness and horniness? Four stars. Mm. That's 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 Eric and I's buddy James Burns. I don't normally allow friends in, but I I, I thought that was thoughtful. I thought, I that, thought thoughtful. that looked like him. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> James Burns of seminars. He's so thoughtful. Movies that explore the bureaucracy of the afterlife are the best kind of movies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. Because you know, like people like Hillary it? Clinton are like dreaming of this afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> we came we saw he oh died <laughs> don't ever dare speak to me again unless you're the physical manifestation of jump the line aka shake sonora in a continuous loop <laughs> jump in the line. Jim. scared the shit out of me as a kid but as i age the idea that death has been at the dmv forever feels more and more likely yeah, yeah. Catherine Kruger with that one. <laughs> and that's too real. Poor to death. <laughs> Him being a genuine sex pest aside, this shit was weird, and I kind of fucked with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to know how stars. old this person is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Funny, cool, sexy people, lots of cool shapes and colors. Nice on the eyes, really. <laughs> and culpa. Five stars. Okay. By the way, I'm, I'm I'm surprised you finally kind of let a snuck a uh, Chapo affiliated person into one of these. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! With with Catherine. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, like it's all about the the content. If someone <laughs> delivers, they ends up on the show. I don't I don't, I don't play favorites. Not the best juice. I prefer apple. I'm shocked what? at this rating. Ooh, what the fuck? I know. I, I, thought, that, I, thought, that was, I thought that one was amazing. Because I, I tweeted that out at Conan after I, after I made that thing last week. Like, after I made this graphic. And I was like, really, dude? <laughs> this yeah, that's... <laughs> this is the I hope this person is not enjoying their life right now. Because who could feel juice only two and a half stars? 
Yeah. Someone well, who can't even put with, a picture up with, on their profile. It goes with that you're reading. Great <laughs> face. You're re- you're hey, reading, she's not. She's not wrong, folks. There's no you're profile picture. Beetle juice instead of apple juice. Like, Cowards. <laughs> I wonder how many STDs Beetlejuice has. No punctuation. I mean, he all looks of them. like he's got. Yeah, he looks like he has all of them. At least right. syphilis. He's got that moldy he's face. Not just STDs. He has scurvy. He has bubonic <laughs> plague. He has <laughs> leprosy. Black Maybe. plague. They all the, the, the letterbox review one liners for the movie Beetlejuice. Movie Night Extravaganza. Follow Movie Night Extravaganza on Letterboxd, a place for film. Uh, the show is basically Forest. I am also on a Kona Neutron. J. Andrew World, also on Letterboxd. Stratocaster down there uh, on Letterboxd. Christina's not on Letterboxd. We'll peer, peer pressure yeah. into it. Peer pressure her into it eventually. Wow. This is clearly a live read. And uh, yeah. So I think I think, Christina's, I think Christina's name on Letterboxd should be Trazodone Dreams. <laughs> that works. Um, and just that's better than Lonely years. Goat Herder, which is uh Lauren's, which <laughs> well, you know, it's already taken. Um, while we're here, <laughs> don't forget uh that you're on Twitch. Make sure that you um subscribe. And if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe for free, and that helps us out a lot. Also, while you are um uh I don't know what this is. <laughs> also, while while you are uh at it if you're watching us on youtube like subscribe all that good stuff and please um, while i'm talking here and then keep a mostly straight face about it, the whole thing um like us and, and um subscribe to us on uh patreon at uh what is it um patreon.com slash movie night extra yeah <laughs> who hacked us who wrote this who wrote this terrible dribble who wrote this <laughs> First of all, how dare you? Secondly, who wrote this? Thirdly, who hacked my account? Dash Joe Lieberman. <laughs> anyway, we do have fun here. Uh, what fun. But do all the things Andy just said that I wasn't listening to. Yeah, Discord, to. Patreon, all and all those things. YouTube, Twitch. Look, push the button. No, I, honestly, no, a um, good suggestion is when you're scrolling, you have like everything listed when you're scrolling. I, I think, think it was. Oh, I think it was listed. All right. It, oh, it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just kept going. <laughs> yeah, well, it sure did. Yeah. Again, right, we got well, hacked. Starting so. with Christina. Final thoughts. We're going to try to keep this under two hours. <laughs> oh, I um, feel you. Just one of my favorite films of all time. I love everything about it. I'm a huge Tim Burton fan. I'm a huge Michael Keaton fan. A huge Marlon Ryder fan. Uh, out of ten bananas. I'd give it a 12. <laughs> All right. Erica. Um, route. I thank you. I uh <laughs> I just I it been I can't remember the last time I actually watched this film. So it was really nice to return to it and honestly somehow I had forgotten how fucking funny it is. Like I was cracking up most of the time. I was rewatching it um earlier today to like refresh my memory. You know, it's really but, funny. It was on. It was on. Um, you know, like when you go on. Uh, like you're scrolling through TV and you're like, they have all the movies that are just on each channel or whatever. Mm-hmm. On Thanksgiving, I after I after I was getting ready for our episode with uh, Eileen, I watched Beetlejuice like right after it because it was on my grandma's cable. I don't even have cable. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> it's, it's completely a grandma's cable sort of film. Yeah, and I mean that as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> but but go on. Sorry, I'm just. Oh no, I just I I remember loving it as a kid and um I think a little bit it freaked me out as a kid too like the shrunken head in the <laughs> in the afterlife for some reason in particular that was like the weird thing to me where I was like ooh but um but yeah I've always been fond of it and I'm really glad to be revisiting it cuz it's it's awesome. Yeah, for sure. Conan yeah, look, so this is, uh, I think Erica had an important point that this is this movie is funnier than you remember it being, which is good for a comedy to be. Uh, also, the visuals are not just striking, but completely uh, spawned off like a whole kind of subgenre of visual effects, practical and otherwise. And when we think of Tim Burton, a lot of the things that we think of with Tim Burton, uh, sure, Night- Nightmare Before Christmas, but like a 
it, it comes comes back to like Edward Scissorhands and Beetlejuice. And and again, as I mentioned many times earlier, the symbiosis of Danny Elfman with the score with with, with Tim Burton's direction is, is fantastic. Everyone hears the top of their game, even when they're playing a heel. Of course, everyone's going to praise Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton's freaking awesome. Of course, everyone's going to praise Winona Ryder. All praised Winona Ryder. But like Catherine O'Hara is so good at playing like this character that is terrible. It so is Glenn way. Shaddix. And Glenn Shaddix was only in two movies. One of them was this. The other one was Nightmare Before Christmas. And uh, I think that it's easy to like not think of those other people that are, are in the cast and are the supporting characters because there's so many star performances in this. But there's a reason why like this is a movie like if this is on cable, I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, Beetlejuice is on. Let's go. I'm in. Grandma's cable, otherwise, strap in. Let's go. Uh, well, I don't, I don't have cable, so like you know, grandma's cable is really all I can. Uh, it's the only cable you're gonna get in this yeah. house, yeah. But uh, you know, it it's it's eminently watchable, and and, and obje almost objectively great film. I would feel and that like it's so like one step over the line this way, and it's too much. One step over the line this way, and it's not enough, and it's just perfect, and I love it, and it's. It's one of my favorite Tim Burton movies. And I'm I'm actually, I was surprised at us bringing it in to Movie Night Fantasia, but I stand by it, will advocate for it, and I vote. It's a perfect last, I think it's a perfect last, uh, you know, end of end of the season movie. And then we'll be back on. There's a fantastical yeah. element to it. Like, it, we'll be, it is a fantastical we'll to, movie. To talk through the entire ge genesis of this on Saturday with Christina, a.k.a. Tulsi yes. Gabbard. But um, <laughs> <because of the laughs> but Andy, I, I gotta say this is uh, totally like the perfect. It is the perfect ending for the month because this is where movies kind of went after the whole Fantasia fantasy uh, kind of theme. Um, but it's built on the shoulders of what came before it. You mm -hmm. can see the bones of uh, Labyrinth and and Dark Crystal and, um, and lungs, all those other movies in this. Lungs too. Dune. <laughs> The highway's littered with broken puppets on a last chance power ride. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and, and but but this this is a this is kind of a transition to what kind of came after. Um uh because because you know, without Beetlejuice, would we have had Jim Carrey? You know, I don't know. The mask uh, seems definitely kind of inspired by it. Um, so my my final thoughts, and please join us again Sunday. We're gonna be here with Tulsi Gabbard again. <laughs> but uh my final thoughts, of course, are shake, 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 senora, shake it all the time. Work, work, works. <laughs>